Human life is like a game of dice. The loser who never had any luck before will be reborn into something new. The guy was grabbed by the neck by a terrible monster. He did not expect that he would die so early, without even waiting for help. But sometimes death is nothing more than a kind of liberation. He understood that he would not survive because he could not even take a breath of air. The guy was faced with the choice of choosing the very same reward card from 12 randomly selected cards. He hoped that this card would change his life, otherwise he would forever remain a loser. Finally, after much deliberation, the young man chose a card. A handsome, white-haired young man appeared before him, even though this playing card was the lowest. He may have the worst cards, but he was confident that he would turn this world upside down. But would he have the courage to challenge the world? Player number 1RT2857, Tyler Young, was 25 years old before joining the game and 18 years old after joining the game. 25-year-old Tyler Young has been in the game for half a year and has even synthesized several top-level cards, but his name is still displayed in the system as a lifelong loser. He has almost come to terms with the fact that this is the reward of losers. But even though he is a loser, even the game should try to console him. When he pressed the move button, he didn't even understand what it meant. He received a message that from now on he was an official player. His unique number was 142875, and now he had to choose a card. Although Tyler already had these cards in his pockets, he calmly wanted to choose a reward. Without hesitation, he poked at the first card he came across, only to have the game finally leave him alone. The guy stared at the screen of his smartphone, puzzled. He got the blessing of the black card, but for him it was a new level of humor. Suddenly, a bright beam of light shot out from the screen, blinding him. Tyler couldn't understand what it was and what was happening right now. The system has made its choice. Now the player is sent to a new world and the monster paradise has been randomly chosen. All that was left on the spot was a phone, cracked from falling to the floor and a bag. The guy had no doubt that he had moved to another world. He thought that he would start cutting everyone left and right without a shadow of fear, and then lick the blood of the monsters whose corpses would litter his path from the tip of his knife. Tyler had a katana in his hand and swung it over himself without a trace of fear. Even though the guy has been a player for a week now, he still hasn't awakened the system. And besides, he only does housework every day. He faced a problem. The heavenly wheel of life was broken. The light of life was slipping away at an incredible speed, 10 times faster than a human's. The remaining period of life was 91 days. The body he received in the game turned out to be a great success. In the Night Academy, he turned out to be the best graduate with excellent marks. He was sorry that the wheel of life was broken. There was complete deception all around. Here he entered the room of his little sister, Tina Yang, his only relative in this world. The guy stared in shock at the girl changing clothes, who shouted at this idiot that before entering, you need to knock. She had the character of a typical teenager, so a book immediately flew into the young man's face. Sitting down at the dining table, eating rice, Tina frowned and said that she was no longer a little girl, so her brother needed to be more careful. Rubbing his bruised cheek, Tyler asked her not to get angry, but rather to eat. Here the emperor's ring on his finger shook. This ring was an identity card in this world, literally a personal account with letters, information about a person, and so on. It also has a personal space for storing things and access to the internet. Tina's ring also reacted, opening a projection. Bad news was reported today. At approximately 4.30 p.m., an eye of the abyss was discovered 310 miles southeast of Square 7D11. There is a suspicion of a monster invasion, so residents of nearby areas were asked to be careful and not leave the area, as well as close doors and windows at night. The worried girl was afraid that they could be close to the epicenter. Tyler rushed his sister away, telling her not to worry. This wasn't the latest news, so the monsters could have left long ago. Besides, their area was well guarded, and they definitely couldn't miss something like this. If I may say so, the D-level district is very small. The population is not even 10,000 and the security level is extremely low. If strong monsters appear and no one goes to eliminate them, then the city will come to an end. Getting up from the table, the girl warned her brother that she had eaten her fill and would go do her homework. Tyler said he would clear the table himself, but Tina advised him to rest, watching the news. The guy learned that the knights were cleaning up the monsters nearby. Fortunately, the level of the Eye of the Abyss was not that high, so he and his sister were safe. Killing monsters might save his life, but his body is too weak. The young man did not want to die by accident, so tomorrow he will go outside the city and kill a couple of monsters left after the invasion. Suddenly, Tina's cry for help was heard, and Tyler jumped up in fright. He rushed to his sister's room, where she was praying for her brother to save her. 
Having kicked the door down, the guy saw that the monster was climbing through the window, and Tina was sitting nearby, pressed into the closet. The monster slowly made its way into the room with the intention of killing the two. Grabbing the bag for defense, Tyler stood up to protect Tina. The monster that was climbing towards them was a vampire. The vampire is one of the weakest iron rank monsters, but the guy grabbed the girl and ran away from there. Tyler locked her in another room and told her to wait for him here while he took the monster outside because vampires loved the blood of little girls. So Tina needed to sit quietly and the guy would do the rest. The girl looked at her older brother with wide open eyes and tears streaming from them. Tyler couldn't let the vampire hurt his sister because he had no one else in this world. At this time, the monster made its way into the house, destroying everything in its path. Tyler screamed for the bloodsucker to come on him if he could. The vampire immediately chased after him. Turning to face his pursuer, the guy was surprised at how powerful he was. Tina sat in the room without making a sound. She was very worried about her little brother. Tyler grabbed the gun and pointed it at the bastard. The guy instantly fired several bullets into the monster's body. But the shots did not cause any harm to the vampire. Tyler was surprised that he could transform. Vampires have a special ability. They can concentrate blood energy around their body to increase protection and strength. This monster is not an iron rank at all. It is at least bronze. Running away from it, the guy realized that he could die like that. The young man had no choice but to jump out of the window. The monster followed the guy straight through the window. Tyler needed to get him to leave here. The vampire immediately attacked the main character. It was dangerous. But the guy had a feeling that something was wrong. Although he transformed, his vampire power was reduced. While fending off the monster's attacks, Tyler realized that he was seriously injured, so he was attacking weakly. Apparently, this vampire escaped from the knights after a heated battle. The guy needed to stall for time a little. With such wounds, his opponent wouldn't last long. The monster was about to grab Tyler with its clawed paw, but the young man dodged in time. The main thing for him now was to hold out longer. Still, the vampire managed to hit the guy and he flew straight to the ground. Lying on the ground, Tyler couldn't stall for time any longer. It was the end for him. But still, he couldn't die like that, like a loser. He decided to try to hold out once more. His bullets began to pierce the monster's protective dome. The vampire's defense cracked and the bullets hit his chest. The spider-like vampire fell to the ground with a crash, wounded but still alive, ready to strike back. But regeneration failed him, and the monster took on its normal appearance, holding its wounded shoulder. Now here, he has become prey for the young man. Having come very close to the monster, the guy was preparing to deliver the decisive blow. With a victorious smile, he fired the last bullet and the vampire died down. He was glad that it was finally all over and the monster was dead. Then, he received a message on his ring congratulating him on successfully completing the test. Tyler defeated the vampire, so he gets a reward. He defeated the second level monster and gets a level up card, and he can choose the reward himself. Then, a small puppy appeared in front of the young man and said that, in addition to the usual ones, he had the opportunity to choose other cards. The little dog pouted and turned away from the guy, muttering that he was actually his assistant and needed to be treated with respect. Turning to Tyler and pointing to the cards, the assistant said that in addition to the gold, the guy also had a special card as a reward for killing a monster. The young man saw his data card. He had no strength, no combat power, a complete loser, just as cruel. And the monster's combat power was level 3 bronze. According to the system's assessment, he was a complete weakling. Tyler couldn't figure out how to judge the value of cards in this world. The assistant replied that white ones are common, green ones are rare, blue ones are legendary, purple and orange ones are divine, and the guy only has loser ones. The main character came up with the idea that he could draw the card himself. Because if you drew a monster card, what is the chance that you can draw a rarer one? The assistant asked the lucky man with irony in his voice if it had been a long time since he had looked in the mirror. The boy tearfully agreed that he was a loser with the worst reputation. Sensing someone approaching, the assistant warned Tyler about it. The sound of heels was heard and a girl came out to them. The blonde asked the guy if he killed the monster. The girl introduced herself as Anna Day and said that she had received a call about a danger. It said that a vampire had attacked the place. Tyler agreed that his younger sister Tina had called because they were attacked by a vampire. He was surprised that Anna, the famous silver hunter of the Hunters Association, turned out to be a girl. The girl decided to ask a little differently about whether Tyler killed this monster. The guy replied that he was the one who killed the monster. But he was partially lucky because the vampire was already rotting. Anna didn't understand how he could kill him if this guy's level hadn't even reached iron, and his life wheel was completely broken. Anna moved closer to Tyler, 
wondering how he killed the monster because she still couldn't believe that he was able to finish it off with just luck. Then the guy remembered his little sister, who was in the house. He immediately rushed headlong towards her, telling Anya to wait a little because he needed to make sure his sister was safe, and then they could continue the conversation. Tina stood near the completely destroyed wall of the house. The girl was very upset because they had to pay for this house for another 32 years. A breathless Tyler, standing behind his sister, called out to her sharply. Tina immediately threw herself into his arms, crying. She babbled that she was scared to death, thinking that her brother had died. The guy tried to calm his crying sister as best he could. Anna had more and more questions for Tyler when she saw that the monster had destroyed half of the house. Turning to Tina, the girl told her that there was nothing to worry about anymore, but her brother had somehow single-handedly killed a third-level bronze-ranked vampire. Tina proudly stated that her brother was the best graduate of the Hunter School, but Tyler was more interested in finding out what Anna wanted to check. The boy's sister asked the stranger who she was and why she had come to their house. The huntress replied that she was a silver hunter and had come to help in response to a call about danger. Tina couldn't believe that she was able to see Anna in person. The girl in turn was scanning the house. Tyler was interested to know what equipment she was using because, apparently, it was gold rank. The girl replied that this equipment is not intended for combat, so it is of great value. It can instantly record the surrounding view, save it, and display it on the screen in 3D format. Now she uses it to recognize the damage to their house. In connection with this, the Hunters Association will pay them appropriate compensation. Tina was shocked by how rich her sister was because such equipment needed to be fueled by at least a year-old life crystal, while Tyler thought that ordinary iron rank equipment needed several life crystals, so the price of gold compared to it was like heaven and earth. Proud of herself, Anna replied that she had plenty of such life crystals, and since Tina called her sister, the girl threw her a three-year-old life crystal as a gift, for which she thanked Anna. The guy realized that, apparently, the hunter was not so simple. Since the vampire was dead, there was probably no point for Anya to delve into this matter. But she was still worried about something, and Tyler immediately asked her to tell him what exactly she needed to check. The girl kept thinking that it would be difficult even for her to fight a third-level bronze-ranked vampire, and the guy also had a broken life wheel, plus he wasn't even an iron-ranked vampire. Anna believed that Tyler had some excellent equipment, so if he wanted it, she could buy it for a high price. The guy replied that the girl had already seen what had happened to his house, and today was the first time he had seen gold rank equipment, and it was just in Anna's hands. Patting Tyler on the shoulder, the huntress said that in that case she had underestimated the guy. She was sorry that his life wheel was broken. However, if he could somehow restore it, she was sure that the guy would become a great hunter. But unfortunately for Tyler, he didn't have much time left. As she was leaving, the girl dropped that the damage assessment for the house had been completed and that tomorrow morning someone from the organization would come here to do the repairs and they would be provided with free housing. Turning around, Anna told the guy not to die and then maybe they would see each other again. Tina asked her brother where they would sleep tonight, to which Tyler promised to think of something. The girl suggested just sleeping for now and everything would be fine tomorrow. Stroking his sister's head, who instantly fell asleep, the guy thought that she was still a child after all since she fell asleep so quickly. As it turns out, being a responsible brother isn't that easy. Unnoticed by Tyler, Lucky appeared next to him, who said that his sister was just a cutie, but his brother was useless. The guy was scared by the appearance of the assistant, to which he calmed the guy down, saying that no one else could see him except the main character. The young man breathed a sigh of relief because no one else could see his assistant. But Lucky was right about him being too weak to protect his sister, so Tyler wanted to pull out another card. Lucky didn't expect the guy to want to do it right now, but Tyler was sure. Twelve cards appeared in front of him, one of which would become his reward. Finally, Tyler selected one of the cards and clicked on it. The system congratulated the guy on receiving the mission card. He needs to become a novice hunter. As a reward, he will receive a correction card. But if the guy does not complete the task within the specified time, he will lose the blessing forever. The young man was surprised because he had not heard before that the blessing can be lost. Realizing the whole situation, he shouted to Lucky that for this, he must be at least an iron rank to participate in the selection of rookie hunters. The assistant warned him that the task had already begun, and all the necessary information was posted on the back of the card. Crying from despair, the guy thought that he would probably remain a loser for the rest of his life. But, in any case, whatever the purpose of the corrective card, he must definitely complete this task. Otherwise, the loss of the blessing will be the end for him. In the morning, Tina shouted to her brother that she was running away to school. 
Tyler shouted after her that the news said that the area closest to them had been cleared of monsters, but the girl still needed to be careful and not get lost, and that workers would be arriving today to repair the house, and as soon as they finished, he would write to his sister. The girl was late for school again, chewing a sandwich on the way. As Tyler walked his little sister home, he decided he needed to get some things done. The guy immediately called Lucky, who had been licking himself before. Tyler ran up to his assistant, grabbing him. Lucky was outraged that the guy was stopping him from licking himself, but the young man had more urgent matters. He was interested in how to finish this task on the mission card. The puppy boredly replied that before talking about participation, he needed to register, which Tyler would most likely fail, since the minimum requirement for participation was iron rank, so it seemed like fate had played a cruel joke on him. Hearing this, the guy angrily warned that they would probably have dog stew for lunch today. Lucky didn't like this idea at all, so he said more gently that the guy needed to come up with a way to bypass registration, otherwise he would simply not be allowed in. It was obvious to Tyler that it was impossible to reach iron rank in such a short time, but he still needed to participate in the rookie hunter exam. But since he got the level up card, he can disguise himself as a tamer to participate in the selection process. Lucky thought this was a good idea because tamers are very rare at this time, so they are highly valued, so this idea is really good. Tyler felt that a level 3 bronze-ranked vampire should be more than enough to pass the novice hunter exam. However, his weakness was too obvious. If one used a weapon coated with poison that caused the vampire's body to actively decompose, he would be at a great disadvantage during combat. Lucky realized that the guy was planning to use the level up card. The protagonist realized that using a level up card on an iron rank monster was wasteful. But completing the quest was more important now. But he didn't know how to summon the monster, to which Lucky replied that he just needed to imagine the summon card, and it would appear, and then crush it, and then he would be able to summon it. Tyler clarified whether the cards were visible to others or not. Lucky replied that only the guy, the monster himself, and the assistant could see the cards, while the rest were unable to see them, meaning Tyler didn't have to worry about his ability being revealed. He took the vampire card in his hand, about to activate it, and then he crushed her, and a young dark-haired guy appeared behind his back. Tyler was surprised that a vampire could look so amazing. Lucky said that the protagonist can choose one of the summoner skills right now if he wants. Tyler was ready to use the card right away. The assistant warned that the level up card can only be used once, but it is not advisable to use it on a vampire. But since the guy was ready for this, Lucky had no choice but to raise the vampire level to advanced. But he still felt sorry to use this card on some vampire. The transformation was so bright that Tyler closed his eyes. When the process was completed, a handsome white-haired man appeared before them. With such a shock of silver hair, Tyler was ready to name him Kaneki because this name would suit him perfectly, but it violates copyright, so the guy decided to call him Bai. The protagonist transformed the handsome man back into a card. Only Bai turned out to be a third-level iron rank. Tyler asked Lucky why the vampire's rank had dropped. The assistant replied that the vampire was originally a level 3 bronze rank, but because the guy was weak, the combat power he could use was only that of a level 3 iron rank. But it is rare to see a master lower the rank of a summoned monster due to his inexperience, Tyler warned Lucky that if he was so rude, he would never make friends. The assistant replied that he did not need them. Then there was a loud knock on the door and they asked to open it. Opening the front door, Tyler was stunned to see two thugs who looked like debt collectors. Fearing the menacing appearance of these people, the guy thought that they were members of the mafia, murderers, or vampires who decided to take revenge. Upon learning the boy's name, the thug immediately became kind and sweet saying that they had received an order for restoration and had come to repair the house. Tyler immediately breathed a sigh of relief. Another person warned that if the guy had any wishes, he could let them know and they would do everything possible. The repairs would be finished in five days and a temporary place of residence had already been prepared for them during this time. As Tyler accepted the pass from the agent, he was surprised that they would be staying in a high-class, well-known hotel. The association gives huge subsidies to those affected by the monster attacks. As they approached the hotel, Tina said that it was close to her school, and she had always dreamed of going inside, while Tyler couldn't even imagine that they would ever be able to visit such a luxurious place. The doorman greeted the guests warmly, inviting them inside. The guy suggested that his sister first eat and then rest in their room. Once inside, Tina said that she was no longer hungry. Tyler warned his sister that the food and room were provided free of charge. The girl was furious that her brother began to eat without her. Tina began to devour the food with gusto, although a few minutes ago she was not hungry. 
The guy was a little alarmed by how quiet it had become around him, and people looked very scared about something, and all because a really scary man walked into the restaurant. Tina pointed her finger at him, but Tyler scolded her not to point her finger at him or even look at him. The guy noticed that the man was looking at both of them with a painfully intent gaze. Stretching, Tina announced that she was finally full. Once she had eaten her fill, Tyler grabbed her hand and dragged her into their room without even trying dessert, which made the girl unhappy. But the aura around this man did not give the main character any peace. If he could not defeat him, then it was better to hide as soon as possible. The big guy stood up after them without even finishing his food. Tina said that their room should be ahead. She was delighted by the fluffy carpet that made you walk like you were on clouds. But Tyler didn't pay attention to her, caring only about the thug who was chasing them. Even if he loses, he needs to protect his sister by any means necessary. While the guy was thinking about this, they came to the right room. Tyler turned sharply to the man and asked why he was following them. The brute replied that his room was opposite theirs, and the guy sheepishly apologized to him. Entering the room, Tina began to examine it. She was shocked by how big it was. Besides, there were two more rooms. Tyler could not fully enjoy their temporary residence because he could not catch his breath from fear. Plopping down on the sofa, the girl said that there were too many people in this hotel, and even if he was bad, he still couldn't do anything to them. The guy agreed with his sister, but apparently he was acting like that because he was tired. So he warned the girl to take a shower, do her homework, and go to bed. But Tina didn't agree with such a schedule, after all. It's not always possible to live in such a luxurious place. It was already past midnight when the girl finally fell asleep. Looking into his sister's room, the guy smiled and thought that too much had happened in these two days. There was a lot of information on the internet involving their elite hunter benefactor, and Tyler hoped he could learn something useful from watching it. Watching the video, the guy realized that Anna was skilled as expected. She was very strong. It was not for nothing that she was called a genius among silver hunters. It was then that Tyler noticed a sound coming from the next room. It's midnight, and this guy decided to go for a walk. Tyler realized that he was definitely not mistaken. It was that big guy who was now heading somewhere. But what is he going to do at this time anyway? Having moved a decent distance, the man took out his sword and began to train. Watching him from the window, Tyler noticed that his skills were very good, which was exactly what he was missing right now. There are 18 sword styles in total. If the guy continues to observe, he will definitely be able to remember his movements. Still, staying at this hotel was worth it. Early in the morning, a bird knocked on the window and brought a package. These birds are called Thousand Word Bird. They are low-ranking monsters that can speak human language, and they specialize in delivering various items, as they have a storage facility in subspace. Peeking out of the bathroom, Tina wondered what her brother had ordered. Tyler warned his sister that she should hurry up and get dressed, or she would be late for school again. Tina didn't calm down, asking her brother what exactly he ordered. The guy replied that he was preparing for the hunter exam, and the girl needed to go get ready instead of staring. The gear cost almost all of the boy's savings, but he hoped it would do some good. The kit included armor-piercing bullets, although there were only 10 of them. They would be very useful in the future. Having unpacked all the items, Tyler decided to move on to the most important thing. He pulled out a black steel combat longsword, the best he could afford. He remembered the thug's 18th style well, so he decided to try it out. Then he lunged, turned and struck, dashed and cut. A notification came from the system congratulating Tyler on receiving the first fragment of the Great Devastation skill. Turning to Lucky, Perrin asked what he should do with it. The assistant replied that everything was very simple. He needed to collect all the fragments to transform them into one complete skill. In anticipation, Tyler said that it was easy. He just needed to swing the sword to get the skill. But it turns out that it is not so simple. Lucky explained that his success rate was a maximum of 80% of the original's accuracy and the guy would be able to get a fragment if he repeated the technique perfectly. Only after reaching 100% accuracy could he continue to receive skill fragments. The main character didn't think that he needed to swing a sword exactly like that guy with a scar. The assistant replied that acquiring skills is not that easy. Determined to succeed, Tyler was determined to continue training and get all the fragments. Lucky just wished him luck and went back to sleep. Nine hours later, the guy was lying on the floor from fatigue. He was only able to collect 20% of the fragments, but he did not have the strength to continue training. From behind the door came the voice of Tina, who had returned from school. The girl entered the room with a man, introducing him as the founder of the hotel, Mr. Brian. He said that he wanted to say hello to Tyler, but Tina was wondering why her brother was sleeping on the floor. Then, the man greeted the guy warmly. He was glad that they stayed in his hotel, 
But Brian had been too busy lately, so he greeted guests so coolly the young man did not see anything wrong with this, so he invited the gentleman inside. Handing over a soothing tea that he had prepared especially for the guest, the man called the guy very hardworking. Tyler thanked him and said that this hotel looks just wonderful and the service here is top-notch. Mr. Brian sheepishly replied that if the client was happy, it was an honor for him. And as he was about to leave, he said that Tyler could call him at any time if they needed anything. Tina noticed that being the founder of this hotel, the gentleman is very humble and kind. Tyler appreciated his excellent tea. The girl almost forgot to give her brother the reward from the Monster Hunters Association for killing the monster. Tyler had killed a bronze rank vampire and was wondering what kind of reward they had decided to give him. He was surprised that the suitcase could only be opened with a fingerprint. Tyler excitedly took out the Dark Eagle 33, a new mechanical weapon made of dark steel from the Desert Eagle Company. It not only has a pistol mode, but also a sniper rifle mode. It was currently the best dark steel mechanical weapon on the market and was probably worth more than most bronze rank equipment. Watching her brother's excitement, Tina noticed that the Hunter Association was very generous. Only Tyler remembered that activating such a weapon requires a lot of energy, so he can only use it after reaching the iron rank. He needs to hurry and collect all the fragments of the Great Devastation skill. Tina didn't expect her brother to decide to take part in the Hunter exam. She knew that Tyler was strong, but she was still very worried. Tyler asked his sister not to worry. He would keep his word and not leave her. The girl willingly believed him. Then the guy shouted at Tina to stop sitting around and go do her homework. When the girl left, Tyler decided to continue training because after the master's tea, he was well rested. The guy not only became calm, but his concentration also increased. He thought that this was because his skill was also growing. Time after time, the young man received new fragments of the skill. He had this strange feeling, like he couldn't stop training. In the morning, Tina was shocked that her brother had not slept all night. But the chance of getting fragments was increasing so he had to continue. The boy continued training without even noticing that his little sister had gone to school. Finally, the system congratulated him on obtaining 300 fragments of the Great Devastation skill. Now Tyler can transform them into the rare Great Devastation skill. The guy really wanted to get this skill, so without hesitation he agreed to transform the fragments. The protagonist only received the first part of the Great Devastation skill. This card turned out to be rare, and the skill rank is gold, this skill is classified as special, so it has no level limit. The difficulty will change according to the user's strength. Lucky appeared out of nowhere and explained that this skill has two parts, and if you combine them, you get an epic rank card. But the second part was lost a long time ago, and even he doesn't know its location. Tyler hoped that the guy with the scar wouldn't get mad when he found out that he copied his skill, even though it looked like he was just showing off his technique on purpose. Anyway, the guy wanted to thank him and also find out about the second part of the skill. The main character immediately went to his room and pressed the call button. Opening the door slightly, the man asked what he wanted. Bowing low, the boy thanked him for teaching him sword skills for three whole days. The man replied that he had not taught him. If Tyler himself was attentive and diligent, then he had learned it himself. But how much he understood everything was his problem. But even if that was the case, the guy was still grateful to him. But before he could finish speaking, the thug closed the door right in front of his nose. Tyler decided to ask about the second part after the exam. When Tina returned from school, the guy told her that they had to go home tomorrow because he had received a letter during the night and the girl was upset. She was so used to the luxurious living that she didn't want to go back home. Tyler promised her that in the future they would live in a house much better than this one, the girl agreed, but she was still happy with what she could be with her brother. The guy advised her to go to bed early because they had a hard day ahead of them tomorrow. At this time, the thug did not understand what the gentleman saw in that guy, he was just lucky to kill the vampire. He is at the lowest stage, and his wheel of life is completely broken. At best, he has two months left. Turning to young Evans, Mr. Briand asked him if he had ever been wrong about people. Yang replied that the gentleman was certainly not mistaken. But his personality was special, and he could not interfere in the affairs of this world. And that was probably why the gentleman ordered him to train this boy. Brian knew the limits of his powers, but Yang had also talked to this guy and was interested in what Evans thought about him. The man replied that he was talented, but compared to Anna, he could not be called a genius. In that case, Brian decided to check with Young how long it took him to master the first part of the Great Desolation. The man replied that this skill may look simple, but it contains a vast ocean of Blade Dao essence, and he had practiced 18 hours a day for 103 days to fully master it. Brian said that it took him 103 days for the Blade Genius to learn the first part of the skill. 
But as for how long it would take that guy, Yang guessed that it would take him two to three years. The gentleman silently showed three fingers. Yang thought that the gentleman meant more than three years. But Brian replied that Tyler had already learned this skill in just three days. The man couldn't believe it. But the gentleman said that nothing was impossible, and now they needed to get ready and go. Yang meekly agreed with his master and followed. The next day, Tyler and Tina left the hotel and headed to their renovated home. But when they were already there, they could not hide the surprise on their faces. Their house had been completely rebuilt, which made them think they had mixed up the house number. But, as it turned out, they definitely had the right number because one of the association's people met them at the door. Turning to the man, Tyler said that the house was slightly damaged and only needed to repair the wall, and they built a new one. The man, smiling radiantly, replied that these guys were friends of Mrs. Anna, so they gave it their all. At first, Tina didn't understand who he was talking about, but then she realized that he was talking about her little sister, Anya. The man agreed with her, the lady helped them a little with the restoration order, and when the management saw it, they demanded that everything be done properly, and all because her father is one of the three vice leaders of the 7th District branch of the association, and her mother is the 7th District representative of the Federation. As he left, the man wished them a great day and hoped they would meet again. But Tyler did not share his joy because he did not want the monsters to destroy his house again. But Tina noticed that they decided to please because they thought Tyler was Anna's friend. Entering the house, Tina began to enthusiastically examine the house. And the guy decided to focus on something more important, since the house was renovated. And all because in three days the exam for novice hunters will begin. Three days later, the boy was already flying on a griffin a low-ranking monster that specialized in transporting people between regions. Tyler even found the flight very exciting. In just two hours, he reached code area 7C87. The speed of the Griffins truly lives up to their reputation. Big cities are so different, there are so many people, that Tyler didn't know where to go first. Before leaving, the guy gave all his savings to Tina. It should be enough for her while he was gone. Then some guy called out to him with the intention of going to the exam together. Hugging Tyler, the guy introduced himself as Kevin Joy. He didn't expect that there would be a daredevil who would decide to take the exam, even without reaching the iron rank. The main character introduced himself in response, but he still felt uneasy about his excessive talkativeness. Having reached the branch of the Hunters Association, Kevin reported that this stronghold is considered average. Ordinary people leave missions here, and the Hunters later take them. If they follow the crowd now, they will definitely come to the right place. Tyler noted that his new friend knew a lot about the association, to which Kevin replied that he always dreamed of being a hunter, so he studied everything related to this craft. Before leaving for the Citadel, they were met by a pretty girl who informed them that the briefing would start soon, so she should take them inside. Entering the room, the guys were surprised that there were so many people there and they all came for the exam. Tyler asked Kevin what the briefing was for, and he replied that before the exam began, professionals would tell them how it would go. Immediately, a girl came out to the examinees and shouted for everyone to close their bread slicers. She introduced herself as Frida Kern and said that she would be their examiner. From that moment, the entrance to the hall would be closed, and those who were late would be disqualified. As Kevin expected, it was the demoness Frida. To begin with, the girl decided to tell the rules. If someone were to speak in parallel with her, they would have only themselves to blame for the consequences. This time the exam will be held 330 kilometers away from the 7C87 Citadel. The area is the Golden Flame Desert. They will need to cross the desert in 15 days and reach the 7D121 Citadel, which is 1,500 kilometers away from the landing site. The girl added that it is forbidden to bring any water or food. They can only be obtained in the desert itself. Kevin noticed that Tyler was not writing down the location of water sources, but the location of monsters. The guy replied that he was afraid of dying prematurely, so he would simply avoid them. Pointing to the map, Frida showed a safe route, but the children will have to overcome the snowy mountain called the Ridge of the Goddess on their own. They can use any tools, but if at the end of the exam they do not reach the citadel, they will be disqualified. The examinees didn't think that they would have to climb the mountain with their bare hands, but Kevin was staring at the demoness relic, and since Tyler didn't know what it was, Kevin explained that the relic was an extremely rare item of gold rank or higher, and the only way to obtain them was by killing a monster of superior rank or higher. Before the exam began, Frida warned that her assistants would now check everyone's equipment. It was not allowed to take equipment above the iron rank. Poisons and other illegal items were also prohibited. Everyone had a call button for help. After using it, a rescue team would come for the person, 
and he himself would be disqualified. When Tyler was going to be tested, Frida stopped him abruptly. The guy thought that she wanted to cancel his participation because he did not reach the iron rank. But the girl just looked at the guy and smirked. But then she told him to move on. And the main character realized that she was laughing at him because he wouldn't last long. But her spatial relic was truly amazing to him. And not only for him, Kevin was delighted with her relic because they are rare and much more valuable than weapons of the same rank. Frida reported that they checked all their things and functions like the Empire Ring, which gives access to the network. Any types of communication, as well as navigation and other maps will be disabled. Only inventory will be available. Other participants were despondent because if even the cards were unavailable, it would be the end of them all, and the percentage of those who passed this year would likely be the lowest ever. Frida officially announced that the exam for the novice hunter has begun. Participants pushed forward to take control of the water areas. Kevin said goodbye to Tyler and went ahead to explore the area. The main character had no choice but to drag behind, because his strength did not allow him to go faster. At his speed, he can cover 40 kilometers per day, but he only has 15 days, which means his limit is half the way. One of the examiner's assistants said that this guy wasn't even an iron rank, but he still decided to take the exam, and his abilities were below average. Frida could bet that out of 15 days, he would last only three. Lucky kept complaining that Tyler wouldn't be able to cover 1,500 kilometers in a year. The guy understood that he was not like the other participants. If he could run like them, then he would need only half a day. Lucky said that if you subtract two days for climbing the mountain, then the main character needs to walk about 100 kilometers a day. And so Tyler cannot rely only on himself, but the assistant will not be able to help him in any way because the system has only an auxiliary function. The guy said that he just needed information and he could handle the rest on his own, so he asked Lucky to give him information about the Shadu tribe's sand mountains. The system reported that the sand ogres are iron-ranked, live in groups, have low intelligence but high attack power. Lucky realized that Tyler wanted to go off the safe path to find them. The guy wanted to collect fragments to convert them into a summoning card, and it would be possible to use the ogre as a mount. The assistant did not like this idea because the main character cannot cope with an entire tribe. But Tyler didn't say he would attack the ogres alone. By nightfall, the protagonist finally found the sand ogre camp. One of the monsters slept quietly in his tent, not even suspecting the imminent attack. But then a small stone flew into his forehead, which immediately woke the ogre up. Tyler was standing nearby waving at him. The ogre, approaching, immediately struck with his club, but the guy instantly dodged, covering his nose from the terrible stench. Running away from the monster, the main character shouted to him that if he wanted to feast on fresh human flesh, he should follow him. Having caught up with the guy, the ogre was about to strike him again with his club. But before he could do this, both heads were cut off. All this time, Bai, whom Tyler was counting on, was waiting for the monster. The protagonist thought that Bai was super strong. Lucky said that for a third iron rank vampire with copper rank combat capability, a first iron rank monster would be a piece of cake. Since Bai was so strong, Tyler suggested not to risk their lives by luring the monsters one by one, but to rush in and kill them all. Here the main character received a system notification about receiving prana. Tyler didn't understand what was happening, but his life wheel suddenly lit up. Lucky forgot to warn that the monsters summoned by Tyler will help him restore the wheel of life. When one monster kills another, it receives its life force. Half is transferred to the main character, and since Bay's wheel of life is full, all the prana is transferred to the owner. Tyler was thrilled that his wheel had gone from three sections to 28. Not only would he not slowly die, but he would also have a chance to break through to the iron rank. With his sword at the ready, the young man called Bay to hunt ogres. The two of them immediately began killing the monsters one after another, Bai with his bare hands and Tyler with the help of great devastation. With each ogre killed, the main character received system notifications about receiving fragments of the sand ogre cards. Lucky warned that in order to break through to the iron rank, 152 sections of the life wheel must be filled with prana. The white sections are already filled, only the gray ones remain. If Tyler uses additional life force, he will be able to activate and fill them too. The guy thought that to activate one gray section, he would need as much prana as needed for 10 years of life or nine white sections. In the past, he would not have thought about such a thing, but now he had a real chance. While dealing with the monsters, Tyler shouted at Bayou to kill them all. Suddenly, a loud, angry roar came from somewhere, which immediately attracted everyone's attention. Tyler didn't know if anyone else was still alive, but Lucky said that the guy seemed to be in big trouble. The exam participants, 
who had set up camp nearby, also heard the roar. They realized that it belonged to the Shatu tribe's sand ogre, but it was screaming as if it had gone into berserk mode, even though it was only copper ranked. One of the guys guessed that the only ones who would dare to attack them were the giant saber-toothed wolves, so it would probably be a bloodbath today. Then someone's huge paw burst out from under the ground. Tyler froze in place in shock, all because the height of this monster was at least 10 meters. Lucky only wished him luck, since the guy himself provoked the wrath of this big guy by killing so many ogres. More precisely, he aroused the wrath of the head of the Shatu tribe of copper rank. Bai and Tyler immediately began attacking the ogre from different sides. The protagonist realized that this monster's skin was too thick. He also has too much health and bad strength. If things continue like this, the main character will definitely die. Therefore, we need to attack his weak points. This is the only way he can win. Approaching the monster from the front, Tyler ordered Bai to attack it from behind. The guy fired bullets at the ogre, but he blocked them with one hand. Bai maneuvered with great speed next to the monster, striking it and simultaneously dodging it. Tyler yelled at the vampire to finish off the ogre. But ignoring Baya, the ogre rushed towards the guy. The main character didn't think that the monster would try to attack him. But the ogre didn't have a chance because he himself fell into the guy's trap. When the monster approached its maximum distance, Tyler fired several bullets at it. These were iron-grade explosive rounds, so they hit the target instantly. Lucky, who suddenly appeared out of nowhere, was jubilant with joy. The young man was outraged that the assistant had first run away with his tail between his legs but now had suddenly become bolder, Lucky promised that since he couldn't help, he would try not to be a burden. Here, Tyler received a system notification about receiving a rare monster card. Sand Ogre X1, since the guy killed someone who is higher in rank than him, then the promotion card is canceled for him. The main character was surprised that he, a loser, was given a whole map. Lucky was sorry that Bai didn't kill the monster. That way, he could have gotten a lot of prana. Looking at the card, Tyler wasn't surprised that Bai couldn't kill this ogre. Not only did they have the same rarity, but the ogre also had a cool passive skill that increased stats. Last time the guy absorbed Bai's skill, Blood Art. Now he wants to choose Giant's Endurance. Lucky thought it was a good choice. And how else is Tyler going to run away from everyone like a coward? After exterminating the Shatu tribe, the protagonist received enough map fragments. Now he has three monsters to summon. And he also received a new skill, Entry Rank Giant's Endurance. With a dissatisfied face, the assistant said that no matter how many cards Tyler collects, he still won't be able to summon more than one monster, and in general, this should be discussed when the guy becomes stronger. The young man praised Bai for his good work and then sent him off to rest. Having immediately summoned the ogre, Tyler was delighted by his huge and strong appearance and therefore named him Tyrant, although Lucky considered this name to be shitty. Now the guy had a three-star iron-ranked Tyrant Shatu, Lucky knew that Tyler was going to follow through with his plan and use the ogre to get across the desert. But the young man thought that using a rare map to ride was a waste, so he had another idea. Having returned Tyrant back, the guy said that it was not in vain that he and Bai had previously slaughtered the entire Shatu tribe. So a regular ogre would do just fine, and Tyrant and Bai would be his trump cards for the right moment. As Lucky expected, that coward is coming up with cunning plans again. The assistant warned that if the main character has monster cards of the same type, then the rarer card can absorb the worse one and get an improvement of a random skill. The guy suggested that he could give this monster to Tyrant to eat and improve one of the skills, to which Lucky gave a positive answer. But Tyler didn't want to rush. He still needed to catch up with the others, so for now he would use it for protection and hunting. And after the exam was over, he would feed it to Tyrant. Lucky didn't even imagine that he would think it through so far. Without this ogre, Tyler certainly wouldn't have been able to get this far. But then the monster caught his foot on a chain stretched low from the ground, and the guy immediately flew off the ogre. He realized that he was being attacked, but he didn't know who dared to do it. Then a voice rang out, which decided that the guy wasn't afraid of death, since he was speaking so rudely. There were three guys standing in front of him who knew who Tyler was, and that he hadn't even reached the iron rank, but had decided to take the hunter exam. This is not the first time the main character sees this impudent guy, and he already thought that he was some kind of monster. The blonde was furious that he was called a monster, but then the second guy entered the conversation, who introduced himself as Riley Wallace, and his cousin, Subaru Lewis. He apologized for the fact that Tyler fell into their trap, and also asked not to worry because they had no evil intentions. This kid is a leader and he talks nicely, but the main character sees right through them. Riley said with a smile that the difficulty of this exam is not a joke, 
and although Tyler's monster is strong, he himself is very weak. Besides, this ogre will not be able to climb the mountain, so he suggested that the guy team up and get to the mountain together, and there they will help him. The protagonist thanked them for the invitation, but he is more comfortable alone because he does not like to work in a team. Riley asked him to think it over carefully, but Tyler had already seen his true face. Losing his patience, Subaru shouted that they didn't care about him. If they didn't need a monster to move quickly, then no one would even pay attention to the guy besides. Tyler, even though he is a tamer, will not just get away with insulting the noble Wallace family. The young man realized that they weren't going to back down so easily. Such families had gold-ranked hunters, so the Federation recognized them as a noble family. So it was no wonder that this boy was so arrogant. Riley said they weren't forcing him, but the way Tyler was treating them was a little annoying, so he was going to have to teach him a lesson. Subaru shouted that freaks like Tyler needed to have their heads taught how to behave properly. Then the whole group attacked the ogre, but he suddenly disappeared right in front of their noses. Without wasting any time, they decided to kill the tamer first. With a poisonous grin, Tyler asked if they were strong enough for this, and Bai immediately covered him with his body. The vampire immediately attacked Subaru, causing him to fly back. Seeing that Subaru was injured, the others rushed to his aid. The protagonist instantly canceled the summoning of Baya, and the next second he summoned Tyrant. The attackers couldn't believe that this guy had three monsters. The Tyrant immediately scattered all the people to the sides. Subaru, who was barely moving, called Tyler a scumbag and shouted that he didn't dare do that. Riley couldn't comprehend that a person who hadn't reached the iron rank could summon three monsters. Looking menacingly at the boys, Tyler reminded them that they wanted to teach him a lesson, but now they suddenly changed their minds. While holding back Tyrant's blows with his shield, Riley suggested that the protagonist calm down and talk. His shield was already all cracked, and to damage an iron rank weapon so easily, this monster must be copper ranked. Tyler stopped the ogre from striking further, offering him to listen to what they had to say. Riley apologized to the guy for such a mistake, but Subaru shouted at him that there was no point in being afraid of Tyler. If he killed them, he would be suspended from the exam. He would be blacklisted, and he would never be able to pass the exam again, and killing a member of a noble family is a serious crime in the Federation. Turning to his brother, Riley yelled at him to shut his mouth. Coming closer to Tyler, he said that the Wallace family recognizes strong people, so he is ready to make everyone apologize to him, compensate for the losses, and become a friend of the protagonist, and also, he will be able to take any piece of equipment from his inventory, but the young man replied that he does not need compensation from Riley. He just needs all the items in Subaru's inventory to cover the moral damage caused by his arrogance. Subaru yelled that a tamer is useless without their monster, so Tyler needs to stop looking down on them. Protecting his master, Tyrant was ready to attack his opponents at any second. Taking out his pistol, the protagonist said that he himself was capable of fighting back against Subaru. A bullet was immediately fired into the guy's shoulder, but it passed tangentially, touching only the clothes and the top layer of skin, but still trembling with fear, Subaru asked Riley for help, but his brother only turned away from him. Tyler walked up close to the guy lying on the ground and said he was giving him three seconds to say the last words in this life. Lying under the gun pointed at him. Subaru still believed that he would not dare to kill him. Otherwise, he would be in big trouble. Tyler said he didn't care at all about losing his qualifications to become a hunter. Although he doesn't even have an iron rank, he is able to summon very strong monsters, especially since he has three of them. Even if Tyler doesn't become a hunter, any other organization will hire him. Besides, the association won't let him go so easily. Even if he kills not only Subaru, but also the young master, he will still have a chance to leave without anyone knowing anything. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Subaru began to beg for mercy. I didn't react to the guy's words. Tyler was about to pull the trigger. Then Riley shouted that the main character could ask for whatever he wanted, but let him spare his brother, and the young master would do everything possible to please him. Subaru kneeled down and said that he had four pieces of iron equipment. He was willing to give everything and the items in his inventory. Tyler could take whatever he wanted. The main character just wanted to pull the trigger. But this time he felt it was worth treating the young gentleman with respect. In fact, killing Subaru would have caused a lot of trouble. But these nobles are too annoying. But now the Wallace family will not touch him and will even be in debt. Here the figure of a man slowly approached them, asking for help. The shape looked all too familiar to Tyler. Kevin didn't expect the main character to be a tamer, if it weren't for him. He would have already been buried under that sand. Tyler thought Kevin was with the leading group, so he didn't understand how he could have gone astray. 
Kevin said that when they were setting up the tent and preparing for the night, they were attacked by ogres. And because of this, everyone ran away in all directions. The guy was grateful to Tyler for saving him. Now he became his benefactor, handing the main character a piece of meat. Kevin explained that it was an armored boar that his team had caught. Tyler didn't even know that he could cook. With sparkling eyes, Kevin said his life's goal was to become a gourmet hunter. He wants to travel around the world in search of the best ingredients to create the most delicious dish. Kevin began to explain that the meat of an armored boar is fatty and juicy, and becomes even tastier if cooked on the grill. The meat of saber-toothed wolves is also simply amazing. Different areas are home to different monsters, for which there are different cooking methods. Tyler thought that Kevin was a good person and he was good at cooking, so it would be useful to have him around, but he was very loud. Kevin lost his tent, and Tyler's tent was with him, so he wanted to sleep together, as they say, in a crowd. But not an offense. The main character poked his head out of the tent and said that he was used to sleeping alone, so he wouldn't be able to fall asleep if they were in the tent together. Lying down by the fire, Kevin muttered pitifully that he was just too fat, which made Tyler uncomfortable being around him. The protagonist looked at Tyrant and decided to leave him to guard them just in case. Late that night, Kevin slept carefree on the sand near the dying fire. Tyler, too, slept peacefully, dissolving into his dreams. But then he suddenly opened his eyes, sensing something was wrong. Through the tent, he saw that Tyrant was standing in battle gear. Having jumped out of the tent, the guy could not understand what had happened and where the danger was. But then his face became covered in sweat. For them, everything was very, very bad. He began to wake up Kevin, who was sleeping and thinking that it was already morning and time to eat. Tyler screamed at him to get up quickly because they needed to get out of there quickly. Kevin didn't understand why they should run, because Tyrant was very strong and could protect them if necessary. Tyler told him to look up at the sky where a flock of yin crows was flying straight towards them, and it would definitely be the end of them. Having climbed onto Tyrant, they rushed away from the crows, Kevin screaming at the top of his voice that it was too early for him to die. Tyler yelled at him to stop yelling. He was only getting attention. Yin crows belong to the ghost family and do not have a physical body. They can pass through objects, which means they have nowhere to hide. The protagonist saw the news about how a whole squad of hunters were killed by them. The corpses did not have any damage, but their souls were sucked out so they looked like mummies. Kevin said that even gold-ranked hunters prefer to avoid flocks of these crows. At this point, Kevin fell off the ogre and flew to the ground. But the tyrant immediately grabbed him with his hand, preventing him from falling. Tyler thought that sooner or later they would be caught. The only chance to survive was to request help by pressing the button. But then they would be disqualified, and if he failed the exam, he would lose his system, which meant he would lose everything, so he couldn't give up so easily, even if he died. But is there any way to survive an attack by Yin Crows? Not even a day passed before many immediately gave up. Frida thought that the current students were so weak that if some talent did not emerge among them, everyone would laugh at her. Then she received a system notification. The girl was irritated by the fact that she was not allowed to rest even at night. She was taken aback by the speed at which he moved. Even a copper rank wouldn't be able to move that fast in the desert. Teleporting to the desert, Frida thought that this idiot was eaten by one of the monsters, and the signal was coming from there. But then an ogre approached the girl, from whose shoulder Tyler shouted for the examiner to get them out of there. Tyler pounced on the girl from above and pushed her back towards the portal. The guy completely forgot about the tyrant, who would not be able to fit through the small door. So he immediately called the monster back. Frida demanded that the guy who was sitting on top get off her. Later, Tyler explained the whole situation, that they were being chased by a flock of yin crows for half an hour. If it weren't for that, he wouldn't have sent the request. Frida said that such speed was abnormal for a three-star ogre, so she asked the guy if he was mutated. Tyler thought that Tyrant was a naturally mutated monster. When he received his card, it was already rare. Since the examiner understood everything, there was no point in hiding it. Frida said that she would inform the higher-ups about the crows, so they would finish dealing with them by morning. Now Tyler can only hope that he will not be disqualified, and he will be able to complete the mission as soon as possible. After all, the Yin Ravens are a serious reason, otherwise he will lose his system and the Wheel of Life will return to its original form, which means inevitable death. Frida said that after the crows were dealt with, she would send them back to continue the exam. The guy only agreed with her. Tyler began to justify himself by saying that he hadn't actually used the button. The communicator was broken from the start, and he had nothing to do with it. The girl thought the guy was smart and told him to take the pig with him and find a place to spend the night. When the situation with the yin crows was resolved, they would continue the exam. Lost in his thoughts, the guy didn't immediately realize that they wouldn't be disqualified. 
Frida asked if he wanted them to be disqualified. Tyler immediately ran away, wishing the girl a great day and saying that he would not bother her again. The girl continued to sit in place like a statue. But then she squealed with happiness because she found a tamer with a mutated monster. Now no one would dare say that she chose weak newcomers. Tyler was shocked that such a huge flock of yin crows disappeared in just a minute. Frida said that the people they sent were veterans, and they were much stronger than he thought. And now the guy needs to think about how to pass the exam and move on to the iron rank. The girl warned that if Tyler sent her another distress signal, he would pay for all her hotel bills. The guy considered it another way to punish him, instead of taking away the right to qualify. Kevin gently put his arm around Tyler's shoulders and asked what they had been doing while he had been sleeping. The main character shouted at him to shut up, otherwise he would continue on foot. Tyler reported that last night, while Tyrant was running from the crows, they moved from south to north for half an hour, and now they are near the northern rest area, about 60 kilometers from their camp. They missed a whole night, so they need to speed up as much as possible. While moving on the orc's shoulder, Kevin complained about how it felt like he was being baked alive. Tyler said that if he remembered correctly, there should be a supply point nearby. The boys quickly approached the supply point on the monster's shoulders. Kevin suggested going in there and taking a break, but the main character said that they needed to be careful. There might be other participants there, and for them, they were the same enemies as the monsters. Entering the room, Tyler didn't see anyone nearby, so they could rest here for a bit. Kevin immediately saw his favorite brand of chips and decided to grab some for the road, but the main character told him to only take the bare necessities because they had to follow the rules. But then Tyler noticed that someone had already been here before them. Kevin replied that this was the only one in the entire area, so it was no surprise that they weren't the first ones here. But for Tyler, it was very strange. All these things were not valuable but necessary. They would not just be left. So there was only one option. Something made them leave this place. Kevin asked not to scare him like that. Because there are no traces of a bat or threat nearby. The tyrant began to growl sharply, warning of approaching danger. Tyler turned around and shouted that they needed to get out of there quickly. Sitting on the ogre, the guys saw a monster rapidly catching up with them underground. As Tyler thought, there was danger after all, and now it was chasing them. The boys shouted at Tyrant to be careful because this thing was very fast. The org turned around so abruptly that the guys almost fell off him. And with all his might, he struck the ground with his fist, from which a huge worm appeared. The boys froze in shock, because their end would definitely come soon. Because it is a hell worm a demonic monster that even the tyrant cannot cope with. But it is strange that it ended up on a safe path. Tyler immediately shot at the monster, but it didn't matter. The guy said that this monster was too fast, so they couldn't escape. Kevin just cried that they would be eaten, and he was still too young. Here the main character asked the tyrant to stop moving. Kevin shouted that if they didn't move, they would be eaten faster. But Tyler made him shut up and not move either. He assumed that since this monster had no eyes or ears, it tracked its targets using vibrations. Kevin couldn't help him because he hadn't even read the Book of Monsters. Tyler was right. If they didn't move, the worm would lose them. But if things continued like this, they would never pass the exam. Kevin thought he had a great idea. Taking out a piece of meat, he threw it to distract the monster. But Tyler had warned him not to move. When Kevin moved, the worm immediately noticed him. Unable to keep his balance, the boy fell off the tyrant and flew down. The blonde lying on the sand and looking at the monster approaching him, asked for help. Worried about his friend, Tyler gave Tyron a signal. The ogre immediately attacked the hellworm so that Kevin could get up and run away from there. Tyler sat on the shoulder, looming over the monster to get its attention. Kevin prayed for his friend to survive, otherwise he would not be able to repay him for everything. As Tyler ran away from the worm, he shouted for Tyrant to run in the same direction and threw him aside. On command, the ogre threw his master in the other direction. Tyler began to watch Tyrant running from the worm. The guy apologized to him for leaving him alone. He will have to use the organ as bait for the worm. The monster began to wrap itself around the Tyrant's body in a flash, causing him pain. But Tyler, as a tamer, will never give up his monster so easily. The Tyrant, safe and sound, found himself behind his master. Now that they had fooled the worm, they had to go and get the bun. Tyler called for Kevin, but he didn't respond. Having never found the bun, the main character decided to move on, hoping to meet him near the mountain. On their way to the east, they had to face many dangers. The safe route proposed by the association turned out to be not so safe. Then Tyler realized that this was too weird. But finally they reached the Ridge of the Goddess. The guy told Bayou that Tiran's size was not suitable for mountaineering. Therefore, only the two of them will climb the mountain. 
Tyler connected himself and Bay with a thick rope, so the vampire climbed first, pulling his master along with him. If it weren't for the giant's endurance, he certainly wouldn't have survived this journey. Here Bai accidentally stumbled and Tyler flew down. Noticing what was happening in time, Bai grabbed the rope with his hand. Thus, Tyler was saved, and he thought that he was finished. To prevent this from happening again, the vampire put the main character on his back, which made the guy blush. He asked Bai to let him go because he could climb on his own. Besides, he still has some male pride left. It was already too late, so Tyler suggested that Bay stop there. They still had some meat left, which Kolobok had prepared, for whom the guy was still worried. Tyler didn't want Kevin to die because he wanted to try more of his cooking. Turning to Bayou, the guy asked why he wasn't eating, but the vampire suddenly rushed down. He immediately returned back, holding a small fluffy animal in his hands. Tyler recognized it as a snow beast. He had heard that they were very cute and harmless creatures. They were rare, so their price was equal to copper equipment. Turning to the animal, the guy assumed that it had come from far away because it was hungry or smelled meat. Taking pity on the snow beast, Tyler let him try some meat. The guy told Bayou not to worry because this little animal was harmless. Now it became clear to him why all the girls were delighted with them. But this fluffy lump eats a lot, of course. And when Tyler had no more food left, he sent the creature back home. But then the fluffy one pulled the guy by the pant leg. Bai was already preparing to attack. But the main character stopped him, saying that it looked like the animal wanted to take him somewhere. The snow beast nodded vigorously, agreeing with the guy. They had nothing else to do anyway, so the two of them followed the little animal. Fluffy jumped sharply onto the ice. Tyler shouted at him to be careful, otherwise he could get hurt. But instead of hitting the ice, the animal passed through it. Tyler was very surprised that the animal passed through the ice. After touching something, the guy assumed that it looked like a wall of ice. But it was an illusion, and there was something on the other side. The main character suggested that Bayou go in and see what was inside. After passing through the illusion, Tyler felt like he had stepped into a cold pool. Before the guy could enter, he was blinded by a bright light. Opening his eyes, he discovered that he was in some place unknown to him. When he wanted to turn to Bayou, he saw that he was not around. Someone's voice said that he couldn't get through. Only people with permission could enter because there was no place for monsters here. Seeing the little animal, Tyler asked if he said that, to which the fluffy one answered in the affirmative. The guy found it strange that his voice did not match his appearance. After these words, the little animal began to transform into something huge. He allowed Tyler to see his true form, and the boy immediately realized that it was Yeti standing in front of him. Yeti are ice attribute monsters. They are even stronger than superior level monsters. If he wants, he can easily kill the protagonist. Noticing that the boy was afraid of him, he hastened to calm him down, saying that he was not going to harm him. Yeti brought a man here to ask for help. Tyler didn't expect such a strong monster to ask him for help. But then he asked what kind of help was required from him. Having placed the boy on his paw, Yeti invited him to come with him. But first he wanted to tell a story, so he told Tyler to listen carefully. The guy replied that he had no other choice. Long ago, when the monster was still a child, he had an owner. She was the kindest creature in the whole world, and all his memories from that time are associated with her. Tyler couldn't imagine that he could have a mistress. The monster replied that she was not human, but he only realized this after he began to evolve. She loved people, loved to communicate with them, and often hid her identity to join them. And so she often left this mountain, although Yeti was lonely. But he could cope with it as long as she was happy. Later, she fell in love with a man, an ordinary mortal. She was ready to give everything for him, and from that day on he never saw her again. Until one day she finally returned to the snowy mountain. Yeti was so happy that he immediately rushed to his owner, until he saw that she would soon be gone, when that man found out that she was not human, he gathered a group of hunters to kill her. During the battle, he was wounded and almost died. To save her beloved, she tore out her own heart. The man survived, but all she could do was wait for her own death. After listening to the story, Tyler said that the beginning was so good and the end was sad, but he was interested in what happened next. Yet he replied that he listened to the last order of the mistress and then plunged her deep into this icy lake. And since then, this mountain has remained trapped in ice. Tyler didn't understand what Yeti wanted from him since his owner was dead. The monster replied that she said that one day a chosen one would come here who would be able to melt this lake, and then she would come back to life, and the ice on this mountain would melt. Tyler thought he was the chosen one, but Yeti said that there were three before him and they all failed. The guy assumed that he was just randomly bringing everyone who climbs this mountain. But the monster said that he only chooses people with good hearts. Several thousand years have passed and Tyler is only the fourth to enter here. 
The guy decided to find out what was required of him, yet he replied that Tyler just needed to drop a drop of his blood. Whether he succeeded or not, he would be able to leave. If he failed, the monster would erase the boy's memory of his stay here. Since that was the case, the main character decided to try to help him. A girl betrayed by people, he hoped that he could help her. A drop of blood fell with a ringing sound onto the surface of the ice. Nothing happened, so they decided to wait. But even after an hour, nothing happened. The guy apologized for not being able to help Yeti. But then the ice began to crack and the lake began to melt, and all the plants returned to life after thousands of years. Tyler didn't realize he had that many nutrients in his blood. Yeti was very happy about the long-awaited return of his owner. The girl was so beautiful and divine that Tyler stared at her, blushing. She greeted the Ice King and thanked him for guarding her all this time. Yeti replied to his mistress that it was his duty, so there was no need for thanks. Looking at the Chosen One, the girl thanked him, asking him to call her Miss Alina Lumi. Tyler replied, you're welcome, and introduced himself in return. It may have been rude, but he decided to ask if she was a monster or not. Miss Alina replied that she was from the Divine Race. The guy guessed that it was similar to the monster that opened the 3,000 eyes of the Abyss 800 years ago. The girl realized that the guy was talking about that self-proclaimed god. But even though he could be called strong, he was not from the divine race. He was only given a small part of the divine powers. Tyler didn't really believe this girl's stories. The goddess noticed this and said that the power of the gods was beyond the understanding of people. That's why Miss Alina suggested that the guy demonstrate his powers. Tyler had this strange feeling that his cracked wheel of life was now completely restored. The goddess said that the wheel of life had been bothering him for a long time. So as a reward she healed him? The guy was shocked by the power of the gods. But that wasn't all she could give Tyler for saving her. She will give him something else as a reward. Then, the guy received a system notification about the detection of a divine presence, entering a state of ethereal perception. And the Great Devastation skill card has been upgraded to epic rank. Tyler was very happy with such a cool gift. Miss Alina said that the main character is very unusual for a mere mortal. As expected from a divine race, she sees right through him. No wonder Lucky was afraid to stick his head out. The girl suggested that Yeti send this gentleman back, but she promised that they would try to help Tyler in the future. But he replied that this was enough for him. After the main character leaves there, they will also leave this place. The guy asked where they were going. The goddess replied that they would return back to their world. The guy thought that in that case, they would never see each other again. The girl asked Tyler to be careful on this mountain. If he decides to stay longer, he will meet a lot of monsters. But it was really strange. The hunter exam should be easier, but he had already encountered so many dangerous monsters. Miss Alina said that she felt the aura of a monster that had reached the rank of superiority, and it seemed like it had a skill that made the surrounding monsters hunt for it. So the guy needed to leave the mountain as soon as possible. Now Tyler finally understood why he encountered so many monsters along the way. The girl hoped that they would meet again, and the guy asked her to take care of herself. The barrier was still as cold as ever, and besides it was already morning. Seeing by, Tyler apologized to him for waiting there all night. He said that something happened to him on the other side, but it doesn't matter because they need to move on. He is full of strength and ready to continue on his way. After his life wheel was restored, the boy became stronger, and he was curious about how strong he would become after he reached the iron rank. Finally, the guys reached the top of the mountain and just in time for the end of the exam. Then they heard a strange sound that made them tense up, but a flock of geese came out from behind the hill towards them. Tyler was surprised that they lived here. Seeing Bai's tension, the protagonist said that they may look menacing, but they are so delicious that he could catch a couple. It was then that Tyler noticed that something was wrong with them. He was right. A second later, they saw not geese in front of them, but real monsters. But they were too big, so Tyler shouted to Bayou that they needed to get out of there. The vampire pulled the owner by the rope, and the main character shot the monsters, but there were too many of them, so they needed to hide somewhere. Bai spotted a cave into which he quickly dragged Tyler. Now all they had to do was wait here until they left. Then the guy noticed that something strange was happening with the monsters. They ran away in fear from the huge bluebird. Tyler said with fear that it was a black raven, and he was at the peak of his transition to the copper rank. But her appearance was to his advantage because at least these geese would leave and they would be able to move on. The raven landed right in front of the cave, looking murderously at the guys. Tyler realized that things were really bad for them. But he didn't understand why this bird was attacking them, because they hadn't done anything to it. Bai was about to rush into battle, but Tyler left him, saying that he was no match for the copper rank. The guy almost passed the exam, so he asked Bai not to interfere with him. 
He fired a bullet straight into the crow's chest, but it ricocheted off without hitting the bird. The guy was shocked that the bullet did not leave a single scratch on the raven's body. Could this really be the end for him? The raven continued to break through into the cave with all his might. Tyler told Bay that he had an idea and the vampire should wait for his signal. When the bird poked its head into the cave, the boy gave a signal. With Bay's help, the protagonist rushed straight to the raven. Even if this bird has a super strong body, there must still be vulnerable spots. Tyler aimed the gun directly at the raven's eye and fired. The raven slid and flew down. The guy used his last bullets on it. He killed a monster that was several times stronger than him, but he still didn't get a promotion card, but only got a monster card fragment. A black raven. The card was removed because the raven he killed was of a higher rank. The guy regretted that he had so few cards, otherwise he would have easily raised the rank of Bai and Tyrant to Legendary. Lucky appeared out of nowhere and explained that promotion cards are given randomly. That time Tyler was just lucky with two cards. Besides, the strength of the summoned monsters depends on the owner. If the owner is weak, then the strength of the monsters will be limited, and it doesn't matter what rank they have. The guy got a doubling card, with the help of which for one hour for all killed monsters he will receive double the reward. Lucky said that if he finds suitable monsters, he can use this card to get a lot of fragments. But Tyler's bad luck still continued to surprise him. The guy was not in the mood to talk, so he asked his assistant to dump him. It's been a long time, so they need to hurry and get to the top as soon as possible. And after completing the exam, you will need to buy more bullets, especially armored ones. A bunch of obstacles took them too long, but they finally reached the top. Suddenly, someone said that this is why the weaklings should have given up from the very beginning. There was a guy standing near them, but neither Tyler nor Bai felt his presence. The guy said not to be so surprised because he is a participant just like everyone else. He immediately asked the question whether Tyler killed his Black Raven. The main character did not understand why he attacked them, since this guy is also a tamer. The boy replied that he had released the Raven to find food for himself, and that they had simply been unlucky. But he won't forgive Tyler for killing his Black Raven just like that. Therefore, he will remember the main character's actions and take revenge. The boy had a copper rank Blood Eagle, which meant they were not in a very advantageous position, so they needed to come up with something urgently. Having climbed onto the raven, the stranger said that he was not going to take revenge right now. Tyler's vampire is very good, but he himself is still very weak. As he flew away, the boys shouted that they could talk when the main character came down from the mountain. The guy was furious that this kid was so arrogant. He even wanted to take him back and fight. But then Tyler realized he needed to figure out how to get down from here. Bay's wings are not adapted for flight, but they can be used for other purposes. Tyler always wanted to try this. He never thought that his dream would come true in another world. Now he understands why people have always wanted to learn to fly, because it is so fascinating. But it looked like Tyler's fun was over because they were approaching Area 7D121. The guys were met by Frida. She didn't think that the guy would arrive first. The girl congratulated him on passing the exam, and a little later, he will be able to register as a hunter. Tyler didn't think he would be the first to arrive. After all, that arrogant and haughty guy who looks like everyone owes him something should have arrived before him. The guy clarified that he also had a blood eagle. The girl understood that he meant Hunter Killian, but he doesn't count. Tyler wasn't quite sure whether he was taking the exam or not. Frida replied that he was a participant, just very different from the others. He was special, so he did not need to pass the exam. But he insisted on passing it like everyone else, so he could immediately become a copper hunter. The life crystals that Miss Alina gave the guy were sold for more than three million. Now he can call himself rich. Frida warned him that after the exam was over, registration would take some time, so Tyler would have to stay here for a couple of days. The guy decided that he would spend this time replenishing ammunition and farming monsters. At the gun shop, the salesman said that he doesn't sell bullets for the Dark Eagle. It's rare to meet owners of this weapon here, so he doesn't order them. But Tyler can go to Old Floral, even if he doesn't have them. It means that no one has them. 7D-121 is much larger than Tyler's area, but no one sells rare gear. Looks like he'll have to find this floral. The guy spent so much time finding this shop, its owner must be quite unusual. Entering the store, the main character said that he had come to buy something. The old man told him to choose whatever he wanted, and then come up to him, and he would name the price. There are equipment from iron to gold grade, the price is high, but there are also many limited edition weapons. This old man is clearly not that simple. Tyler said he needed armor-piercing bullets for the Dark Eagle 17. He hoped that at least they would be here. Floral immediately asked how much he needed. The young man replied that he needed 3,000 regular and 300 armor-piercing bullets. 
the old man was surprised that the boy decided to buy so many bullets. The total amount is 165,000 credits, the old man summed up. Froll said that if Tyler had enough money, he could even get the relic. The guy thanked the old man and said that if he needed anything, he would definitely come here. He never thought that he would meet such a person here. Then there was a loud sound. The old man explained that it was an alarm notification. It seemed like something had happened. Tyler ran out into the square, where a lot of people had already gathered. And from afar, he could hear Frida announcing that the exam was not over yet. It turns out that a monster that can control other monsters appeared in the Golden Desert. And because of it, many of the participants were trapped. So for safety, she asked everyone to stay here. These monsters were much more dangerous than many thought. So this was the only option to save the guys. The girl reassured him that the association had sent a superior one to deal with the monsters. And when the main one died, everyone else would run away. Suddenly, a cheeky blonde interrupts her, asking what will happen if the superior one fails, since it takes too long for the other one to arrive. The young man declared that he was not going to sit there and wait and left, and the examiner announced to everyone that they were going home and that the situation should be resolved by tomorrow. After the meeting, Tyler caught up with the red-haired girl to find out about his fat friend, but it turned out that he decided to leave the exam at about the same time the young man reached the ridge. Afterwards, she sternly ended the conversation, ordering him to return to his place and not even think about going anywhere. In the evening, the guy sat on the window and thought about the excellent monster and the hunter, how their battle was going. The next morning, the alarm sounded again, waking the brunette. When he went out into the corridor, he saw everyone running in confusion, looking for leaders. Tyler stopped one of the runners to find out what was going on, but he only said that everything was bad, and they needed to go to the conference room immediately, since an excellent hunter had died. There was already a noise at the meeting, and everyone was shouting to be let out while there was still a chance, because even the excellent one couldn't cope. Kern began her speech by saying that the monster was badly injured, and in order to recover, he sent his creatures towards them. Being hunters, their job is to protect this area. Someone shouted out that they hadn't even been registered yet. They didn't need to go and die with the other hunters. Unable to contain himself, Tyler began his speech about how he had recently encountered a flock of yin ravens in the desert. Then, a hellworm had chased him, and on the ridge he had almost been eaten by geese. All of them were controlled by an excellent monster, and if the guys decided to leave, they would not be able to cope with them. He asked how long Frida could last, having the highest rank among all. She began to reason that all the monsters from the Golden Desert and the Goddess's Ridge were heading their way, and she would be able to hold out for a day. The young man said that he could hold out for three hours. Even gold-ranked hunters were not sure that they could escape, and for them, this was a direct path to death. And even if they sacrifice this place and escape, the monsters will deal with it. After this, they can go to other settlements where the children's relatives and friends may be. Life is to be treasured, but running away is definitely not an option. They need to work together and fight back against the monsters to protect this area. After this fiery speech, everyone began to support him, except for the blonde. Frida supported the brunette and said that everyone should follow the hunters from the association and help protect this place, because if they unite, they will definitely be able to win. Her assistant ordered them to take their gear, form teams that suited their type, and register to make them easier to track. After everyone left, she stopped Tyler and said that her relic was capable of teleporting a maximum of 50 people, and she would allow him and all participants under 20 to leave first. It turned out that the previous speech was only to calm people down, but soon this place will turn into hell. Her relic has a radius limit, so the nearest excellent hunters will only be able to come here after 48 hours. However, the monsters move at a much faster speed, so in 10 hours they will reach them. The hunting association in this area has very little power and cannot protect it. Tyler interrupted her, saying that his words weren't just to reassure the people that once the monsters crossed the ridge, they wouldn't be able to hold out for long. But he couldn't just run away. They just need to stall for time until the excellent hunters arrive, and then they can kill the monster. Their chances are slim, but they are not zero. There is still time to evacuate the residents to the mountains using the mountainous terrain. They will just need to wait two days until the superior arrive. The girl told that she knows about one place in the mountain gorge, which can accommodate many people. You just need to find something to block the entrance. Tyler really liked this idea. The girl said that they would follow the plan and they should hurry. Evacuating 200,000 people would not be that easy. After some time, there were many people in the mountain gorge. While Tyler was surveying the area, the guys next to him were talking about the upcoming fight to the blonde. He was calming them down and saying that there was nothing to be afraid of since professional hunters were fighting ahead so it was much safer here. 
Tyler noted that John had detection skills and could also set traps. Ethan could fight at long range, and Vivian could provide support. Their team is very well balanced, so they should definitely cope, and the guys were confident of it. They walked past the slain huge monsters. Professional hunters are very strong and didn't even give them a chance to show off, according to John. Tyler began to tell the Elder to transmit the acceleration of the superior monster, and the evacuation of so many people would definitely attract the attention of these creatures. Suddenly, the young man saw a projectile flying towards him and quickly pushed her away. It turned out to be a huge axe that almost crushed the heroes, and it was thrown by huge minotaurs who were clearly hostile towards them. The guys were worried when they saw iron rank minotaurs with a totem that increased strength. They thought that they simply had no chance. A huge horde of monsters rushed into battle with a ferocious roar. The guys decided to deal with the totem first. Tyler commanded Ethan to cover him. The young man prepared his crossbow and shot an arrow straight into the minotaur's eye. While the creature was distracted by the terrible pain, Tyler took advantage of the moment and finished it off with his sword. Vivian was told to help John set traps. The squad leader decided that it was high time to try the power of the Great Devastation. While he was distracted by examining his weapon, a minotaur with a totem attacked him from behind and decided to crush him with it. However, the guy immediately reacted and attacked the creature with one move, killing it and receiving a fragment of the country card of the minotaur monster. Thanks to the bleeding effect from John's traps, the monster will soon be finished off. After the battle, Tyler received a fragment of the time transformation card, thanks to which the owner will be able to transform into any monster with which he has a familiar connection. While the young man was reading the card he had received, another minotaur approached him from behind. But it was not to be, by cut it in half, thus saving the owner. The team watched in amazement as Tyler fought off a large number of opponents on his own. After this, Tyler said that they had spent too much time fighting. The other team should have reached the meeting point by now, so they needed to speed up. Suddenly, the Empire's ring vibrated, and Frida Kern contacted the young man, asking where the team was. The brunette calmly explained that they were attacked on the way, but everything was fine, and they were already on their way and would be there in about two hours. The girl was not happy with this arrangement and said that they should be there in an hour. Since the monsters are heading towards them, they need to run away urgently. Meanwhile, in the gorge where everyone was supposed to meet, the massacre was taking place. Frida fought desperately with the monsters, killing one after another, because of the too many seriously wounded, it became difficult for them to defend the entrance to the gorge. The girl said that those hunters who remained here would fight with her until the very end, and all the wounded would have to retreat. Suddenly, a huge, scary, demonic, bloody hyena appeared among the monsters. The girl immediately rushed into battle, but she was stopped, realizing that even she would not cope with a pack of demonic hyenas and would die. Suddenly, at that moment, Tyler appeared with his team, who were already flying to kill the monster. He started the battle and ordered that the wounded be helped to retreat and that the hyenas be left to him and John. The blonde confidently said that he would cover him and began a bloody fight. The group commander believed that the third rank of iron was an excellent opponent. However, at that moment, the hyena raised its rank to the second and began to attack with terrible force. She pinned the boy to the ground with her clawed paw in order to crush and kill him. Frida told John that they needed to deal with the small hyenas first and then they could help the boy. Because he was a tamer, he sent a huge carpet to save him and free him from the clutches of the hyena. At the same moment, Bai flies up to the creature from behind and attacks with his fiery wings, while Tyler strikes from below with his sword. Through this battle, he was able to obtain a fragment of the bloody hygiene monster card. He was killed by him and was a higher-ranked monster, and as a reward, he randomly receives a skill card. Frida was surprised that his monsters were so strong, and that he himself had swordsmanship skills. But he said that it was too early to talk and that they needed to quickly help the wounded while the hyenas were retreating. John said it was very good that they came so early, otherwise everything would have ended very badly. Frida ordered everyone to retreat to the entrance of the gorge and regroup. However, at that moment, a new wave of monsters appeared from behind the horizon. This time, they were spiders. The boys were very scared because they did not expect this, and the girl prepared for another battle. Many began to run away, but the red-haired girl ordered them to stand still because the mission was not over yet. Even if they ran away, they would still face inevitable death. The monsters should arrive in about 10 minutes. The guys simply did not have time to block the passage with stones, but there was a bunch of corpses here, and they could use them to prevent the monsters from getting through. Frida supported this idea and asked John to assemble a team and start acting, while she prepared to hold off the spiders. 
Tyler said that it would be better if the Elder took care of the passage, and he would lead the others to buy them time and block the path to these monsters. Ethan also said that he wanted to go, because he had a long-range weapon which suits Tyler's style. The girl reminded that she was the eldest here, and therefore could not place all the responsibility on the young and inexperienced. But the brunette objected that she should not forget that she was the only commander at this base, and for the sake of her honor she will not leave 20,000 lives for them. After that, he rushed into battle along with Aiton and a few other guys. Rita ordered John to act quickly. They needed to close the passage as soon as possible. At this time, the hero desperately fought with a new wave of spiders. Suddenly, he decided to call Lucky and said that he wanted to use the card with the new skill that dropped after killing the bloody hyena. The assistant said that in the face of death, he had no other choice anyway and used it. He was given snow step by chance. Thanks to the new high-ranked skill, he was able to move quickly, which greatly helped him in battle. The guys didn't understand who he was constantly talking to and why he started moving twice as fast. Thaler ordered Lucky to temporarily block the connection between his life wheel and the life wheel of his monsters, because by reaching the iron rank, he would be able to obtain the first seat of life, and it could enhance one of his abilities to a high level. The dog reminded that the seeds of life are divided into five different systems, elemental, strengthening, psychic, special, and mixed. Tyler chose the blade type buff system, so he has no choice but to delay his promotion to the next rank as he will need to kill a lot of monsters with ball skills. The assistant understood him and blocked the channel between the master's wheel of life and the wheel of life of his monsters. The next morning, the boys were able to finish off all the monsters. Frida and her team did a great job of blocking the passage. John began to praise Tyler. If it weren't for his monster, they would never have been able to hold out until the morning, to which the young man replied that he would like to rest sooner. Suddenly, the Empire's ring began to vibrate for everyone there due to the news that the eastern region of the 7th District was invaded by a horde of monsters last night around 8 o'clock in the evening. The radius of this invasion was extremely large, and at this time it is confirmed that three small regions of 0.7D123 have been completely destroyed. The number of casualties has reached 670,000 people. There is currently no news from the Citadel, but an excellent hunter has been sent there. Everyone started to panic because many people had families living in this place. Frida assumed that the monster would most likely be seriously wounded by the excellent hunter and was now unleashing its rage on the entire surrounding area, and they were now the only survivors in the area. The girl and Tyler realized that his next target was their base. The monsters continued to advance. The number of victims increased. The girl was afraid that they would not last long. The brunette said that they needed to hold out until the evening, by which time an excellent hunter should reach them. The girl said that she is not afraid of death, and everyone who becomes a hunter forever forgets the feeling of fear. But she does not want 200,000 people to be buried here. Tyler immediately reassured her, telling her that she was a gold-ranked hunter and that there was no need for such a pessimistic attitude. The young man shared that he once heard the phrase, as long as the chest breathes, always be with hope. So even if the hour of their death is approaching, there is simply no need to think about anything, because the main thing is that she is alive now. The guy clearly embarrassed the girl and she turned away from him, blushing, and told him to quickly get ready and continue guarding the entrance to the gorge. However, one of the guys saw through binoculars that the enemies were attacking again, and the guys became wary. This time it was the horde of iron-armored elephants. Frida was angry, because the excellent monster was too cunning. He wanted to use these elephants to destroy their fortification and cross the canyon. The armored elephant's skeletal structure is half metal, so their natural defense is better than other monsters, and the guys won't have time to destroy them before they arrive and break through their dam. The red-haired girl was determined that even at the cost of their lives, they must protect the passage at all costs. But Tyler interrupted her, pointing out the hunter who had suddenly appeared. The hunter hit the huge elephant right in the eye with one blow. The young man remembered that this type of monster had the most common weakness, their eyes. Frida said that Archie Kern is not just a gold rank, he is a genius and is currently ranked 11th in the association's hunter rankings and one step away from the superior rank. This hunter was excellent at withstanding blow after blow, and he defeated elephants. The girl started screaming, calling for her older brother, which surprised Tyler greatly. When Archie approached the guys, he ordered everyone to stay where they were, as this was not the end yet. A new wave of enemies was already visible on the horizon, and they were again spiders, black arachnids, they may not be very strong, but their spider threads are extremely strong. The superior monster wants them to weaken their defense with their webs. Tyler said that there were too many of them, 
It would be difficult to stop them before they got close. Archie noted that if they had heavy firearms, they might be able to deal with all the spiders. At that moment, Frida conjured a huge firearm into her hands. The brother immediately became worried, because she failed the initial exam when she took the gunner's exam, and she doesn't even have a license to purchase a gold rank weapon. His sister said that with money you can buy anything on the black market, but now is not the time to discuss it. The girl said the same passage that Tyler said and fired a gun into the air. The guys started laughing, thinking that the girl had missed, but she asked them to just take a closer look. An avalanche started, which killed all the spiders. Tyler's older brother advised him to never make women angry and that he should remember this forever. The girl began to boast about her achievement, and behind her a new wave was already approaching. It was a huge flock of yin crows heading their way. Besides them, many different monsters were advancing across the earth. There was a whole legion of them. Of course, everyone panicked, and no one expected such a huge number. The guys were confused. Archie ordered the activation of Frida's teleportation relic. Many of the exam participants have great potential, and each of them is a hope for a bright future for humanity. So they need to be gathered together and teleported. The young man said that he would stay late and buy them time. His sister, of course, was worried, because only the two of them were left from the whole family. Tyler decided to summon Lucky to see how many skill cards he had accumulated after killing many monsters. He had 1245 cards in total, so there was no hope that he would get a suitable card that would change the situation with his luck. However, he wanted to combine them into one, because when merging, a rankless skill card could be obtained. But what kind of skill would drop is unknown. And besides, it could only be used once. No one had done this before, because the risk was too great. Even if he gets a card with a strong skill, with his low level, he won't be able to use it. With death breathing down his neck, he had nothing to lose anyway, so he decided to give it a try. Lucky began to combine all the cards into one, and Tyler asked to activate it immediately. A notification appeared that the player combined 1245 skill cards into one and received a small destruction card. Tyler transforms into a fireman, and the ball of energy around him glows with a blinding light. After this, the ball begins to grow, and it becomes so huge that it simply blows away all enemies in an instant. When the guys recovered from the shock, they realized that Tyler had just single-handedly saved them all and began to praise him and rejoice. Frida herself ran towards him and hugged him tightly, praising the guy. And Archie was shocked, because the young man had just used divine magic. Suddenly, at that moment, the brunette felt that they were being watched and saw a dark aura on the slope nearby. Silhouette began to say that he did not expect that it was here that he would be able to meet the Divine Descendant. Ethan said that he couldn't breathe properly because of his terrifying aura, and Vivian was worried because the excellent hunter hadn't arrived yet. When the monster took off his hood, he said that they could call any of the hunters, but he would still defeat them, and they would be able to avoid death if they gave Tyler to him. The life of one in exchange for the lives of 200,000 people. The elder brother said that Tyler was most likely truly a descendant of God, if this monster absorbed his blood, it could evolve to a divine race. The monster continued to say that all the hunters who were supposed to come to their aid were killed, and therefore he thinks that no one will bother them for at least an hour and a half. And if they want to survive, they must give him the boy, otherwise all 200,000 people will end up in his stomach. The helper dog said that it was unlikely that the guys would refuse such a profitable deal. Based on his skills and being a superior ranked monster, the possibility of him dying is 100%. The difference in strength is too big, and he doesn't have any chance. In a stern tone, the elder said that she agreed to give up one life in exchange for 200,000. Of course, Tyler was shocked, because he did not expect this from Freed, and Lucky had already begun to say goodbye to his owner. She said that since he was going to die anyway, she asked for one minute to say goodbye to him. The monster agreed to this condition, and asked not to do anything stupid. She called her older brother along with her, saying that he would be a witness. The girl took the brunette's hand and began to share her feelings with him, saying that she admired his courage, moral qualities, and talents. And since they have to say goodbye, she would like him to know about her feelings. Frida thanked him for appearing in her life and asked for forgiveness for his last prank. She pushed the two shocked guys into the portal and said that the future of humanity was in their hands. The monster clearly didn't like this and got angry. He attacked the portal with dark magic, destroying it. He also took out his anger on the girl, Striking her with a deadly arrow, her older brother and Tyler immediately ran up to her. They were very worried about her condition. The angry brunette was filled with a thirst for revenge and was ready to strike back. The nasty monster said that he gave them a chance, but they deceived him, so they will die. In an instant, he turned into a terrible giant snake and was determined to swallow them all. 
He tied the boy with his tail and squeezed him tightly. He brought it to his mouth and said that it was an honor for him to become one with it. The young man realized that this was his end. A moment later, the snake closed its teeth, swallowing the hero. Suddenly, a huge portal appeared, and the snake's body began to vibrate. A huge hairy hand with white fur began to appear from the portal, and she suddenly pressed the vile monster to the ground with all her strength. The creature spat the hero back out due to the blow. The superior monster was extremely angry, not understanding who dared to interfere with him, because he was one step away from the divine rank. The hand pushed the monster away and it hit the ground with all its might. Because of this, the earth began to collapse and suck the monster inside, and Tyler needed to urgently escape from this place. Otherwise, he would also be a victim of the earth. After that, the Ice King came out of the portal, and Miss Alina Lumi was sitting on his shoulder. It turned out that the owner was worried about him and wanted to see him, so they didn't leave. Tyler was infinitely grateful to them. If it weren't for them, everyone would have died already. Miss Alina cast magic and made everyone fall asleep so they couldn't see them. The girl owed him her life, so she couldn't go peacefully until she paid for it. She handed him a small black snake, which he could safely swallow and place into his wheel of life to grow. There is a faint trace of dragon blood within it, and when it reaches the superior rank, the youth will be able to make it his fighting spirit. He thanked the goddess, but asked her to wait with this, because now his friend needed help. He said he knew she hadn't used her powers for over 700 years, but Frida was seriously injured because she wanted to save him. Miss Alina said that in order to restore Frida's wheel of life, she would need at least a superior soul stone, in which case he would have to give up the beast with dragon blood in order to save her. But the young man was confident in his decision and said that her life was much more important. In fact, it turned out that the girl was joking. She had a supply of souls that she could use to restore the wheel of life, so she gave the snake to the guy. After this, the magical restoration of my friend's life began. The young man thanked her for her help and said that he would remain in her debt. But the girl warned that they would hardly see each other again, because she had been looking at the moon of this world for too long, so she would have to leave. But finally, she wanted to ask him if he believed in love. The young man assumed that such a question was most likely related to her past. Therefore, he answered that love is a feeling that happens in everyone's life regardless of whether he believes in it or not. There is nothing right or wrong about it and, however, no one can judge the decision to give up one's soul for the life of a loved one. Love can make us stronger, but at the same time it takes a lot of our energy, so a person must be ready for it. Even if your soulmate is an ordinary person and not God, for you he will still be the brightest ray of light in the world. Hearing his answer, the goddess seemed to understand everything she needed to know. She was sorry that she couldn't stay with him. Meanwhile, the Ice King had in his hands a man who was supposed to help the group, but was caught in a trap. The goddess warned that she would change the memory of all these people. When they woke up, they would think that it was an excellent hunter who killed the monster and his entire army. That is, all the merits would go to him. Tyler realized that Miss Alina was afraid that some people would find out that he was a descendant of God who could kill a superior monster and could cause him a lot of trouble. The goddess said that it was time for them to go and asked him to take care of himself and said goodbye to him. When everyone began to slowly wake up, they did not understand what had happened. Archie said that it was all thanks to the excellent hunter. Since he arrived in time and killed the monster, the danger passed and everyone was saved. But Frida felt like she had died, and then someone appeared and pulled her out of the darkness, thereby bringing her back to life. And while everyone was praising the excellent hunter, Tyler walked away. Frida looked at him. It seemed to her as if she had forgotten something very important. Tyler eventually returned home alive and tired. Since he came at night, his sister was sleeping in the room. He didn't want to wake her up because she had to go to school tomorrow. The young man did not expect that he would be able to return alive and unharmed. He had already officially registered as a hunter and completed the task within the time limit specified for him. But he did not understand where his reward was. The sarcastic Lucky was already hoping that he would go to a new, more reliable owner but nevertheless he gave the card away. It was a flawless card. Using it once can restore the body. All the hidden problems of the body can be cured, including the blood vessels, the wheel of life, and the life columns. The assistant suggested using it when he had to save his own skin, but the hero had a more suitable use for this card. Lucky reminded that a flawless card can completely restore his body, whether the owner is confident in his choice. Thanks to Miss Alina, his life wheel is fully restored. So far there are no problems that would threaten his life, but he wants to improve his chances in future battles. And for this, it is necessary to restore Bai's blood vessels. If the suppression poison is removed from the blood of his body, then his power will increase significantly. 
As a tamer, he must first and foremost ensure that his monsters are strong, because they are the ones who guarantee his safety. After this, the owner activated the card and restored Baya's vessels. Lucky suggested trying the suppression poison on him again, as he had never seen that kind of improvement on a monster before. However, due to extreme fatigue, Tyler immediately passed out and asked to call Bai back. The next morning, Tina was happy to see her brother alive and well at home. However, she ran up to her brother while he was video chatting with Archie. The sister immediately ran out of the room so that Archie would not see her home image. After that, they got back to business. The blonde asked if Tyler was sure he wanted to choose the six-armed demon as his opponent. The guy had already tested several monsters with sword skills, and only the six-armed demon that carried dexterous hands met his requirements. Archie confirmed that nimble hands could indeed enhance his sword skills, but the six-armed demon is one of the most difficult iron-ranked dangerous monsters and is not recommended to be targeted by the life seed. At the moment, Tyler didn't see a better option to reach the iron rank, and if he wanted to quickly acquire a new rank, then he simply had no other choice. Archie still asked to first watch the video where the reserve hunter team encountered this demon, and then make a decision. Suddenly, my sister appeared in the background, already ready for school, she didn't look like herself, and my brother didn't even recognize her. After a couple of blows, she left, and the older brother was left with a bump and continued to talk about how Archie is now in 11th place in the hunter rankings and is clearly an ideal for many girls. His words reminded the blonde that Frida had sent her greetings to the young man. Tyler was a little confused why she couldn't call herself, but after that their call ended, and Archie only reminded the guy to watch the video and only then give his final answer. The young man couldn't help but wonder what Frida could be so busy with that she didn't even have time to call. As soon as Archie sent him the video, the young man was surprised by the amount of blood from the very first frames. The footage showed some kind of merciless carnage during the encounter with the six-armed demon. He was amazed by the monstrous speed. Each of her arms was a fast killing machine. There was no way to even try to predict her movements. Less than a minute passed before the team of six people simply disappeared. After this video, the hero began to doubt whether he would be able to defeat such a strong opponent. During the day, he went to the 7C87 code area, Baki City. Even if fate had predicted a severe trial for him, he still decided to go to the Wanyu Forest in search of the six-armed demon and hope to improve the necessary skills. And for this, choosing a suitable monster is very important. The most convenient transport to get to the forest is an aircraft, and this can only be found in this city. It had a huge number of cabins and a gigantic deck. The plane had 11 floors full of all-inclusive rooms, so it was no wonder the tickets were so expensive, and it was the first time he had spent so much money on himself. Rumor has it that the people who live on the 11th floor are real bourgeois. The guy decided to find out the news, and it turned out that the incident on the mountain ridge became one of the most discussed topics. An excellent hunter who saved the lives of 200,000 people became something like a god for everyone. Several young teenagers who did not even have the title of hunters yet also took part in the battle. The teenagers showed true heroism, and only thanks to their efforts the residents did not become victims of the monsters. Also among these events there were those that left a bad impression. We are talking about a hunter named Hunter Killian, who was known as one of the youngest talents. He not only did not help his comrades, but also ridiculed them. Hunter, being the hunter who ranked 16th in the ranking of the strongest, disappointed everyone with his actions. The web is now full of angry comments directed at him. Tyler understood that no matter what world you were in, you couldn't escape cyber violence. Suddenly the ring breaks and his friend Kevin calls him in tears. The young man immediately asks him why. When he told him to wait, he disappeared. In his defense, the chubby guy said that he was chasing Tyler to help him. Then he asked the instructor, Frida. She said that he was still alive and gave the brunette's contact number so that he could contact him later. Tyler said he completely forgot about calling him because so much had happened on the ridge. Kevin continued to cry. He said that he prayed every day for his friend, even dug a grave and went there constantly, lit a candle in his memory. He was also excited to learn from the instructor that the boy wanted to fight the six-armed demon. Tyler said that it was true, and he was already on the plane. If everything went well, then tomorrow he would get to the forest in Wanyu. His friend asked him to think about his actions again, because this monster is one of the strongest in the iron rank. Even copper hunters do not dare to underestimate her. After Tyler insisted on his decision again, Kevin agreed with him and said that it was Frida who asked him to call him. Once again, Tyler was surprised why the instructor asked her to convince him not to look for this creature and why she couldn't call him herself. Kevin said that the girl shared that her brother had already tried to dissuade him, but he did not listen, so it was unlikely that she would succeed either. 
Suddenly, the ship shook and the young man heard a terrible noise. The call had to be interrupted. The brunette ran out into the corridor to find out what had happened and whether the ship was under enemy attack. Many were already in the corridor and also did not understand what was happening. Suddenly, it was announced that a flock of birds was approaching, and for their safety, passengers were to leave the deck and return to their rooms as soon as possible. These were monsters. Explosion birds. They reach a length of about 2 meters in wingspan, have sharp claws and a long beak, so they can easily drag away creatures over 300 kilograms, feed on brains, hunt in packs. Explosive birds mostly eat human brains. If they get through, then all the passengers are finished. Tyler knew that. These monsters are probably the most annoying enemy that attacks from the air. The ship is surrounded by a protective field. It will be able to withstand any attack from these evil birds, so all passengers were asked to remain calm. But Tyler still had a bad feeling about this. Some of the passengers reasoned that the ship's safety was over 90%, so nothing could happen to them, and the explosive birds would not even be able to breach the defense. And at that moment, the king of the explosion birds is a giant monster that grabbed the ship, causing it to shake madly. The grandfather was kneeling in fear next to the young man. Tyler understood that this gold-ranked monster would definitely break through the ship's defenses. The brunette asked the man if everything was okay, but he understood that things were bad. If the protective field failed, the explosive birds would easily penetrate the ship and then all the passengers would become their lunch. The guy was thinking about a plan. Even if he released by, with his rank he definitely wouldn't be able to do anything against these monsters. Meanwhile, a bright flash appeared in the sky, and in it was an excellent hunter with golden wings. However, it has gold rank flying equipment on it. Grandfather's spirit was lifted because he realized that they were saved, because this was Adam Garcia himself. He is in fifth place among the strongest gold ranked hunters. The guy, meanwhile, began the battle and delivered a powerful blow with his blade. With just one swing, he was able to drive away the terrible monsters and win. The ship's passengers were delighted with his strength. The girls could not take their eyes off the handsome young man. He only made one swing. If this move was converted into a skill card, the rating should be at least rare. If Tyler can imitate this movement correctly, he will be able to master a new technique. Grandfather wanted to thank the brunette for his help, but he had already run away on urgent business. In his cabin, Tyler planned to study Adam's sword technique just as he had studied the Great Devastation. However, back then the bald man showed it to him specifically so that he could master it correctly and now he is trying to repeat the technique that he saw only once. The young man knew that if he understood the essence of the technique, then there was a very high probability that he would be able to obtain fragments of the skill. He set himself a goal. If he doesn't succeed once, he'll try ten times. If nothing happens then, he'll try a hundred times until he succeeds. Lucky asked to abandon this idea, since the young man had been training with this sword for five whole hours already. But Tyler didn't give up. Simply repeating the movement wouldn't help him master the essence of the technique. But what if he imagined a battle in front of him? The six-armed demon's attacks seem a bit complicated, but in reality, any move it makes can instantly kill. Great Devastation is a good technique in itself, but it lacks speed. The guy can't match the speed of this monster. At best, they will simply kill each other. He needs to find a way to immobilize her, to kill her. He can call on Baya for help. Then, he will only have to finish her off with one blow. Provided that Bai could hold back the demon's six arms, he would only need one second to seize the opportunity, and only one opportunity. And after this realization, he was able to achieve his goal. A notification appeared that the master had acquired a fragment of the Thunder Sword skill card. If he collected all the fragments, he would be able to obtain the full set of moves of this sword technique, after which he continued training. The next day, they arrived in Code Area 7C82. But because he damaged the room, he had to pay a lot of money in compensation. Wanyu Forest was about 3,000 kilometers away from here. There were no military bases nearby, and the guy didn't think he could go there alone. He needs hunters, at least silver rank, who could accompany him and enter the forest with him. After a short search, they found the Adventurer's Paradise building, where a nice girl at the reception was ready to help find a group of adventurers to soon go into the forest. The girl said that Tyler was very lucky because the leader of this group is a gold rank. They are going into the forest to complete their mission so they can take him with them. There is another option, to hire his own team, which will specifically accompany him there and back. However, the price will be much higher. But this offer did not suit him since due to the compensation he paid, he had little money left. The escort cost 200,000 credits. He needed to remember that their group was only responsible for him getting to the forest safely, and they were not responsible for his further fate. So he needed to sign that he had read and accepted all the conditions. 
After that, she said that as soon as the payment was received, the team captain himself would contact the young man, so he need not worry. The dog asked if he was sure of his choice, since there was a very high probability that Tyler could die in this forest, but it was too late to retreat, so the guy said that even if he couldn't kill that monster, sooner or later, it would be the end for him anyway. At that moment, a message came to him from the leader that they were leaving at 9 o'clock tonight and were gathering at the south gate. From the captain's report, Tyler concluded that he must be a strong and reliable man and happily went to the appointed place. In the evening, he was already in the code area 7C82 at the southern gate. However, there was no one nearby except him, and it seemed to him that he had arrived too early. But then he is called out to, and there is a team of three people behind him, led by a girl, Goldie Stewart, who immediately warned him that if he wants to get to the forest safe and sound, he must impeccably obey all her orders. She reminded them that they were only responsible for ensuring that he reached the forest safely, which was stipulated in the terms of the contract. Once they get there, the team will have their own task, so the young man will have to move on his own. She was interrupted by a young man who said that they were going into the forest because they had a rather specific mission, and they did not usually take people with them in such conditions. The young man turned out to be Adam Garcia. He said that most likely they made a mistake during registration, so their team apologizes for what happened. He hoped that the guy would refuse to go with them, since they really couldn't take strangers with them now, and of course they would pay him compensation. If Tyler did decide to go with them, he would be able to learn new sword techniques, but Adam clearly didn't want to take him with them, which made him a little awkward. The hunter continued to say that they would pay him a good compensation so that he could hire a special team of adventurers for himself, and if he did decide to go with them, then they would have to split up and he might get into trouble. But this way, he could hire a team to escort him there and back and even help him defeat the monster he wanted to fight. Tyler simply couldn't refuse such a wonderful offer, and he was about to say that he agreed, but Lucky interrupted him. It turned out that the guy had activated a mission card, the task of which was that he had to follow Goldie, and after reaching the Iron Rank, go back to the city with her. Lucky said that if he completed the mission within a certain time, he would receive a promotion card, and if he could not complete it within the specified time, he would be punished and one of his monster cards would be removed. Now he simply has no choice, he still has to go with the team even if they are unhappy, otherwise he could lose Bayer Tyron and then he is definitely done for. Meanwhile, Adam continued to say that since he had agreed to compensation, then they would not part with him here. But the young man turned around in confusion, since he had not yet agreed to anything. Garcia asked if he was going to go with them, despite the fact that they did not guarantee his return. Tyler stated that he had already signed the agreement and did not want to give up halfway now. He noticed that the hunter was too eager to throw him out of the group. Perhaps there were reasons for this. After these words, Goldie resolutely walked forward and ordered everyone to follow her so as not to waste time. His comrade turned to Adam, but he told him to shut up since they still only had to get him there and everything else would come later. The distance to the forest is about 3,000 kilometers, but riding on gold rank monsters they can get there in an hour and a half. These four of the group must be from noble families, otherwise how could they have such wealth? Tyler noticed Adam looking at him sullenly. He assumed that the young man had a crush on Goldie Stewart. The leader asked why he decided to head into the forest, and when he told her that the young man wanted to reach the iron rank by killing the monster with the life seed he needed, the six-armed demon, she was surprised. She sincerely did not understand why he chose this particular demon with his powers, because if he made a slight mistake, he could say goodbye to his life. The brunette said that there was nothing wrong with that. If he couldn't defeat it, he could choose another monster because the main thing was to try. He was very happy and grateful to be in their company, but he was embarrassed by Adam's constant supervision. When they approached the Wanyu forest, they heard a terrifying roar. The roar seemed to belong to a gold-ranked monster. After landing, Tyler had a strong feeling that the source was somewhere nearby. The team members reminded their leader that they had already completed the mission and brought him here, so there was no need to accompany him into the forest, as they had their own task now, and if he survived, they could pick him up on the way back. Goldie explained that they were on the same path anyway, so they would take him to his final destination. Wanyu Forest was teeming with monsters that he couldn't defeat on his own. Adam decided to intervene and supported the leader's decision with a smile, saying that the boy would be safe with them for some time and it would not affect their schedule in any way. So they went further and saw how a huge dragon was killing its prey. This was the noise the team heard when they flew up to the forest. Stewart explained that this is a type of golden armored dragon that has undergone its first mutation. People call it a crimson armored dragon. 
Among the gold-ranked monsters, he is considered one of the strongest. Adam regretted that there was no tamer among them, since they could tame and seal him. Tyler knew that he, who wasn't even an iron rank, would be nothing more than a toothpick to him if he fought this monster alone. The strength of a three-star gold-ranked crimson-armored dragon is comparable to that of a gold hunter. Only Goldie and Adam could defeat it out of the entire team. Garcia said that since there was no tamer, there was no other choice but to kill him. There was a terrible roar as the dragon saw the team approaching him and threw down his dinner. The brunette felt a terrible pressure. Not only could he fight, he couldn't even move. Adam decided to act like a knight and did not allow the lady to fight, but went into battle himself. He stuck out his blade and asked to wait a minute. The monster headed towards the hunter with furious speed and hungry, evil eyes. If he bites or even slightly scratches the victim's end, not everyone can handle such pressure after all. It is one of the most powerful gold rank monsters. Goldie told Tyler not to worry because although the monster is strong, his opponent is Adam Garcia himself. And as soon as the creature approached the young man, the hunter prepared for his victory. He teleported in an instant and in a moment was already above the monster's head. With one movement of his hand, he cut off the head of a gold rank dragon without any effort. Tyler was shocked. This guy was too strong. The hunter turned to the brunette, saying that if he was afraid, then he should stay behind. And immediately he felt a strong sense of disgust. Tyler wished he had the dragon attribute. Otherwise, he would have been able to collect a whole dragon monster card. However, a notification appeared that a dying mutated monster with dragon blood had been discovered. The monster was suitable for inventory with the mutated soul of the beast that was in the master's body. Tyler really liked this unexpected surprise and now he can get a new dragon card. He immediately turned to his team and said that he needed to stay a little longer and go pee. But they could move on for now. The guys from the team immediately realized that he wanted to wait until this dragon died to take his corpse. For a poor guy like him, this was a big jackpot. But if other monsters came to the smell of the dragon's blood, then this guy would get nothing. Meanwhile, Lucky commanded him that the young man should touch the monster with his hand in order to form a connection with the black python that is in his body. And as soon as he touched it, he felt the soul of the black python being released. The black python has dragon blood, making it ideal for fusing with the crimson armored dragon. He ended up getting a blue epic card, Immortal Dragon. The initial stage of the dragon he was, was his classification by blood concentration. The lowest of it were the heavenly dragons, and those above the heavenly dragon rank were already considered true warrior dragons. Dragon blood creatures are powerful creatures. Dragon blood is rated in the following levels, elementary, intermediate, advanced, and ultimate. The rarity of the card can be epic, legendary, mystical, or even divine. Miscellina Lumi said that strong monsters have more value. Lucky brought the guy back to reality, telling him whether he needed a card with a new skill or whether he should go back to bed to sleep. Naturally, he wanted to get enhanced regeneration, and after a random choice, he received absolute protection. The dog joked with him that the loser was back in business, supposedly since he was lucky once he would continue to lead, but in reality, this is not so. But Tyler didn't despair, because absolute protection was just right for short-range battles. Unfortunately, he can only summon the dragon after reaching the iron rank, otherwise it would improve his chances in the battle with the six-armed demon. After that, he returned to his team, the leader asked him not to lag behind anymore, as it was very dangerous here, and the rest of his comrades were clearly unhappy with his return. Tyler decided to ask Goldie if the crimson armored dragon was a dragon of the dragon family. The girl replied that it did not belong, but since he died from one blow from Adam, then probably the concentration of dragon blood in him is slightly higher than 8%. With such a concentration, and with the right training, he could mutate again and increase it to 10 or more, maybe even become a heavenly dragon. The young man wondered if there had ever really been a real representative of the dragon species in the 7th district. Adam decided to answer this question. It turned out that in the past, too many superiors died because of attempts to kill the dragon. This eventually angered the demigod to such a state that he destroyed that dragon. The fact that a demigod was involved in the body, all information about this incident was classified by the government. After a while, the guys finally came to the place where they would say goodbye to Tyler. They told him to just go straight for another three kilometers, and in that case he would get to the habitat of the six armed demons. Goldie stopped him and asked him not to force himself if he couldn't kill the six armed one, because it wasn't scary, and life itself was an important thing. But he would be able to choose other more powerful seeds when he became stronger. The guy smiled and said that if he realized that he couldn't do it, he would change his mind and wish them luck in their mission. The girl thanked him, and for the first time he saw her smile. 
She may have looked cold on the outside, but inside she was quite pleasant. Well, now it was time to go hunt the six-armed demons, and they set off on their journey together with Bai. The sources indicate that the six-armed demons are immortal creatures that suck the life out of everything around them. At night, the fighting power of these creatures is much stronger, so Tyler suggested waiting until dawn and then taking action. The distance between the two demons in front of them is too small. If he wants to survive, he must first lure them one by one with Bai. The guy suggested looking for a monster nearby that walks alone. They rushed to find the lone demon. To reach the iron rank, a young man must at least kill two six-armed demons, which will not be easy. Suddenly, Bai touched the owner's shoulder, pointing to what he had found. In front of them was a mutated form of a six-armed demon in a purple dress. Going against two people was very risky, but he didn't want to miss this chance. They decided to act according to the plan. Since these demons do not have vocal cords, they will not be able to warn others. The main thing is to first deal with the mask. Once she is broken, she will die. While Bai was fighting one, Tyler decided to approach the other from behind. As soon as he approached the monster with the purple dress, she sensed him and immediately turned around. She began to attack with magic coupled with physical damage, which greatly frightened the young man. Bai turned to his master, thinking he was in danger, but Tyler said it was okay, and he should deal with his own first, and then think about him. He pulled a weapon out of his holster and began shooting at the mutated creature. She, in turn, became very angry and began to slam the enemy into the ground with her hands, but the guy managed to jump back in time. As soon as the monster reached the guy and almost pierced his chest with her hand, it turned out that it was his hologram. Meanwhile, Bai successfully held off the red dress demon with his wings. Tyler ran up to him and touched the monster's mask. Unfortunately, he didn't manage to pierce the mask completely, as he was distracted from behind by a second demon in a purple dress. She began to reach her claws straight towards his chest, and a warning popped up that the master's death rate would soon be 100%. He was offered the option to use the transformation card, and at that moment he agreed, since it was the only available way out. At that very moment, the force threw the monster back, and the hero's transformation began. In a few moments, he became a vampire and now understood what the power of such a monster felt like. And then he began a bloody massacre with the demon in the purple dress. The clever creature realized that the battle was heating up and decided to use a very powerful technique. It prepared to shoot magic from its mouth. Tyler somehow defended himself from the monster's magical attack. She decided to transform herself and now instead of hands she has thorns, and he didn't know how to fight this devilry. The only thing he could do was defend himself from flying projectiles thanks to his passive ability, absolute defense. In transformation mode, he could still use his skills. The skill of moving without a trace helped him a lot. When the six-armed demon realized that his enemy had once again escaped death, he screamed in anger. Naturally, his relatives heard this sound and immediately rushed to his aid. Bai was still holding one of the demonesses with his wings. However, somehow, she managed to free one of her hands and wound him in the shoulder. The blonde decided not to hesitate and attack the mask of this creature with the help of his magic. And a few moments later, she was already lying lifeless on the ground. And there was a hole in her mask. While the heroes were distracted by the murdered woman, the creature in the purple dress decided to escape from them. After analyzing all the data, the guy realized that by killing this demon, he would be able to reach the iron rank and therefore he needed to catch up with her. 10. 2024. He instantly catches up with her and prepares to deliver a decisive blow to the mask in the air. With one movement of his blade, he tears the mask in half, thereby killing the monster. After this, a notification appeared that the master was under the influence of the baptism of the wound, due to which the transformation was forced to be interrupted. It turned out that the wheel of life began to turn, and right from the damaged six-armed demoness, a seed of life appeared. He received a life seed card, but at the initial level it only gives 10% bonuses, but this one gives 20%. At the initial level, it gives 20%, and if he reaches the gold rank, he will get 80% which means that his hands will be almost twice as fast, the effect of dexterous hands is really impressive. Finally, he has life families, and the monster's skills and abilities have been divided. The number of summons has also increased, so Bai may not strain himself so much. Now the Iron Rank Master wanted to take a good walk in the forest. When the owner called Lucky, it turned out that he was going to take a shower and go to bed. So he was unhappy with such a late call. Tyler explained that he did it so that he could see the first upgraded monster with him. And as soon as he ordered the immortal dragon to come out, a very cute black dragon appeared. The owner liked him so much that he decided to name him Cole. The dragon was very friendly and wanted to hug him. 
Tyler decided that he should upgrade it once, and the rarity would rise from epic to legendary. However, at that very moment, he gets a slap on the back of the head from Lucky, who tells him to use his brain. He reminded that to upgrade a regular card to a rare one, one advancement card is enough, and to upgrade from rare to epic, two cards are needed. And even if he has enough movement cards, the dog advises him not to use them on Cole. Because he himself is still a vegetable, the monster cards that he can currently study are limited. Tyler still didn't despair, because even so, it was now no trouble for him to take a little walk through the forest. The next thing they encountered was a purple-eyed eagle, which they successfully destroyed and retrieved the map fragment. They then fought the blue wolves and accumulated 30 map fragments that could be combined into one. The young man was able to acquire the blood hunt skill after activation. The user's sense of smell is heightened, allowing him to distinguish all smells within a radius of 10 kilometers. The skill is especially sensitive to the smell of blood, the range for which increases to 30 kilometers. Tyler decided to continue the hunt, and they fought until the evening. After seven days, they were in the forest, roasting their prey and thinking over plans. Tyler disconnected his life wheel again, as building up life force takes practice. If the conversion rate of the right exceeds 70%, then consider that this is already the ceiling, but he completely missed this conversion process. Whenever Bai or Ember kills monsters, they absorb their mana, converted into life force and eventually transfer to his life wheel. Based on how quickly they were able to kill monsters, he could easily reach the third level of the iron rank. Considering that he still needs to go back with Goldie's group, there's nothing left to do but seal the channel of the Wheel of Life to stop at the first level of the Iron Rank, and so that the guys don't suspect anything. If we add to all this its improvement, then it will be unnecessary to continue to strain ourselves like this. Lucky said there are currently 25 working cards in stock. His monologue was interrupted by an update to the mission map, which stated that the contents had changed. The new mission is to enter deep into the Wanyu Forest and find Goldie, who is currently missing, and return her to Carefree City within 20 days. Tyler immediately said that he refused because he knew that he was currently at a low level, and he simply couldn't go there alone. The assistant reminded him that he must not refuse, and if he gave in, he would be considered a failure and therefore punished. He will have to accept the risk that he could lose his epic card. After these words his eyes lit up, it seems that lately he even began to like this dog. Since it is possible to ask for help, he decided to use it, and the secret advantage showed the last point where Goldie had been but after that the connection with her was lost. The predator goes his way, and the prey goes his way, the forest is full of monsters that he cannot defeat. However, as a blue wolf, he can easily escape from unwanted opponents, because he has super speed, and in two or three hours he will already be at the desired point. When they arrived, they saw a dry field with a stone in the middle. All of this was surrounded by forest. It felt like everything here was burnt, and there wasn't even any grass. And these deep cracks seemed very strange. The stone that stands in the middle of the forest is clearly not simple, but there are no traces of Goldie and her team here. In this case, there is only one option left, to use the tracking skill. He began a bloody hunt and his sense of smell became sharper. However, from the outside it looked very strange, but it was effective. The scent led them to a waterfall where the trail disappeared. The waterfall doesn't seem that big. Maybe there is a hidden cave behind it. He came up with the idea of using a new monster card. It was a ghost. He needed to check if there was a hidden cave behind the waterfall or under the water. If they went underwater, they could have drowned and died. Then they would hardly have been found either, so there must be a passage. Half an hour later, there was no news, and the young man began to worry. He began to wind himself up thinking that the ghost had already died. Although he didn't even need air, the system didn't report his death. And literally a moment later, the long-awaited ghost emerges from under the water with news. Apparently, the team had special diving equipment and based on how long it took the ghost to explore, the passage must have been quite long. The young man did not know what to do in this situation, but soon an idea came to him. With the help of the transformation card, he was able to adopt the characteristics of a ghost and swim safely underwater. After a while, they swam to the desired point and a cave appeared. Tyler was serious and determined. While the guy was swimming through the underwater tunnel, he didn't feel any pressure, he didn't need to breathe, his heart didn't beat, this invulnerable form came in very handy. The ghost's body was simply flawless. He decided to stay in this form for a little while longer and look around. He walked through the cave and did not understand where Goldie could have gone with the team. Suddenly on the ground, he saw a dead blonde man, Adam's henchman. He was stabbed from behind and must have died while trying to escape. He has a very strange wound. 
it looks like it was burned right through him. Tyler didn't receive information about the mission failure, which means Goldie is still alive, but it seems to be very dangerous here. We need to be extremely careful. As soon as he came out of the passage into the main cave, fear and horror of what he saw appeared on his face. In front of him was a superb octopus monster with a very strong aura. To be honest, Tyler was already tired of meeting excellent monsters on every corner. Suddenly, he noticed blood on a stone nearby, which meant Goldie and the others were here. Most likely, they ran away from here after they were wounded. The cave is simply huge, and it is easy to get lost in it. So first, you need to find out their exact location and not walk around in circles here. However, he was discovered, and a toothy tentacle was already rushing towards his face. He quickly hid in the cave and transformed into a ghost so the tentacles didn't notice him. It was dangerous. If it weren't for the phantom transformation, all that would be left of him would be a wet spot. He knew he had to get out of here first and then activate the skill again. Someone is seriously injured, the bloody hunt can pinpoint their location, he followed the trail exactly. He found Adam and Goldie alive, the guy was seriously injured since the tentacles of that creature contained poison. The brunette realized that if they saw him now, there might be problems, so he decided to watch first. The guys stopped after a while, and the leader laid the guy on the ground, asking how she could save him. Adam said that the only option now is a blood replacement. She needs to bleed and inject some into his body. This will help dilute the poison so that he can get to the city. Without thinking, the girl immediately took the blade and cut her hand to replace the blood. Tyler was confused that the hunter asked specifically for a blood replacement, but how could one get rid of the poison of a superior monster so easily? Only he wants to sacrifice the girl. This thought horrified the hero. After a while, she said that she could barely hold on because she had released a lot of blood. Adam, in turn, quickly pulled out a blade and struck the girl in the stomach. He brazenly said that if the girl did not give him all her blood, then how would he get rid of the poison? He finished the blow with a quick movement, and the girl in turn fell unconscious. Tyler couldn't stand this horrible picture and called on the B.I. to destroy the scoundrel hunter who took advantage of the young girl. And while the two were fighting, he ran up to the victim to help her. This unexpected turn of events angered the hunter, and he wanted to kill the brunette who appeared. He ran up to the young man from behind while he was holding the girl in his arms in order to strike him to death. But it wasn't that easy because the guy summoned two monsters at once and the coal was already behind this freak's back. He roasted the traitor Adam with a hot flame, but he decided to dodge. The situation was going well for Tyler as he had leveled up while Adam had lost half of his strength due to a serious injury. Brunette ordered Bay and Ugolko to seize the disgusting Garcia. The young man took a rifle in his hands and began to shoot the scoundrel, because by killing him, he would cleanse the world of filth. A few moments later, the traitor was bound by Bay's shackles, and Ugolyuk was already aiming at his face. However, it's not that simple. The guy was a gold master and he escaped from the trap. He was furious and went straight to Tyler. However, he made one unforgivable mistake. He came too close to the young man and he was able to pierce him with his wings. The guy fell at the winner's feet, completely bewildered. After all, he didn't understand whether it was a human or a vampire in front of him. But Yang quickly interrupted his question by saying that it shouldn't worry him. He wished for him to go to hell and by killing a gold-ranked person, he received the rare skill cards Thunder Sword and Cloud Step for it. The guy was pleasantly surprised that it turns out that you can also get skills for killing people, but he forgot about the most important thing, saving Sweet Goldie. He immediately ran to the dying girl and used the healing card on her. After a few moments, she recovered completely and asked excitedly what had happened. That he finished off the bastard and saved Goldie Stewart. Suddenly, the tentacles of a superb creature burst out of the wall, intending to devour them. Most likely, it was provoked by the monster summoned by Tyler, or more precisely, his dragon blood. The young man commanded Bayou to get the girl out of here, and he himself planned to distract the creature. He asked them not to worry about him because the guy is not that easy to kill, so let them just wait for him upstairs. Bai, without further ado, immediately took the girl into his arms and flew away, and she looked after him with excitement. The monster began the attack, almost killing the brunette, but it's good that he managed to jump back. Fighting him is not as easy as fighting Adam. Going head-on at him is certain death. And at this moment, the young man decides to use his ghost skill. The monster has already focused on his scent, so he needs to buy some time so that Bai and Goldie can get out faster. However, this creature was too smart, and the young man could not fool it. There was only one option left. There was a small hole at the top from which light penetrated. You just have to try to break through to it. The octopus began to destroy the space around itself in order to accurately hit Tyler. 
the young man found himself right in front of the giant mouth of this creature, and it was at this moment that the time came to use the transformation card. This time, he used the Purple Eagle transformation card, which would allow him to fly away. He immediately soared into the sky through a small opening at the top of the cave, and the monster naturally followed him. The tentacles had already begun to stretch out furiously to grab their prey. However, that same strange stone that stood in the middle began to release dark energy. The monster began to evolve under the influence of such strong magic and take damage. As expected, he was sealed under this stone, so he couldn't get out of there. After a while, he returned to the clearing in front of the waterfall, where he was supposed to meet the guys. Goldie had diving gear. Bai must have led her through the main exit, but they were still nowhere to be seen. At that moment, a pebble hits him in the back of the head from Bay, who points to the big stone behind him. Tyler began to be indignant about why he couldn't speak in words, because when they fought, he could speak. But as soon as he became his monster, he suddenly became mute. Looking behind a large rock, he saw that it turned out that the girl had gone to the toilet and was not expecting guests. At that very moment, he receives a juicy slap in the face for his perversions. However, when the girl had already calmed down, she sat down next to the guy and thanked him for saving her. He suggested that they return to the city with him as soon as possible, as he was very tired. Goldie asked about Adam, but Tyler said that he was seriously damaged by the poison in his body, and he only finished him off with the help of his monsters. The girl shared that when she returns, she will tell her family that Garcia was eaten by a superior monster so that Tyler does not worry about himself. She continued to talk about how the Garcia and Stewart families are aristocrats and they have no proof of his death. In any case, they will have to be wary of unnecessary troubles. The guy guessed that she was worried that things could escalate and he could be drawn into it. It turned out that they didn't just go to the excellent monster for nothing. Her mission was to see it and become stronger. But she didn't know that since then it had mutated twice, and although its strength remained the same, its abilities became ten times stronger compared to what they were one hundred years ago. The girl asked why he suddenly decided to come to her aid. The guy joked that he liked her. She knew that the young man was hiding something from her, but for his kindness, she would not ask any more questions. Returning to Carefree City, the young man was exhausted. Suddenly, Goldie turned to him and asked him to give her his thing. It was Adam's ring that the boy picked up. She knew that after death the Empire Ring was supposed to close, so Tyler wouldn't be able to open it. Stuart asked not to worry, because his reward was there, and as soon as she got what was inside, she would send everything to him. She said that they would part at this point and hoped that they would meet again someday. After completing this task, he received a relic card as a reward, a progression card. When he returned home, he asked Lucky to sort out all the cards he had before his sister returned from school. It turns out he now has a total of 19 cards, plus 5 cards with new monsters. His greatest achievement is the new skill he received for killing Adam Garcia. This was quite good, but he was interested in the storage map and the restriction removal maps. Lucky said that if he activates these two vault cards, he will be able to get two additional life wheels. This meant that he would have two more storages of life energy. As for the card of removing restrictions, after use it increases his ability to use any item. Since it increases the possibilities of use, he decided to use it on Lucky. He smiled maliciously, joking that he was not an object and that this could not be used on him. Of course, it could be activated, and the next moment this is what happened. The activation of the new skill, the Map Fragment Store. Tyler started looking at the fragments, this list of iron and bronze rank fragments, and he can't look at the pages with higher rank cards. Obviously, they are all the same level, but he has to give up two fragments to trade for one. Tyler decided to close the topic, since he did not have the means to buy anything from the store, so it was better to wait until this rank was promoted. Lucky wanted to remind him that even though his iron rank life wheel was already full, it would take at least a few months for it to stabilize. Otherwise, moving up to the next rank would cause a leak of life force, and the life force itself would be extremely unstable, and even a slight leak of this force could lead to fireworks from his intestines. Practicing life skills can shorten the time required, the higher the skill level, the faster the life energy will accumulate, and the more the stabilization period will be shortened. But choosing a life skill is not an easy task. It needs to match your attribute and more. And so Tyler decided to contact Archie. But after the operation to clear the area of monsters, he had not been able to sleep normally for several months. The brunette apologized, but unfortunately, he was the only one he knew who had the most experience in this matter, so he could only turn to him. Archie said that the guy killed the six-armed demon and reached the iron rank, and this is very difficult, so it is an honor for him to help him. When choosing a life skill, you need to check your life force to see if it has an attribute, 
since a life skill of the same attribute as your life force will give you an advantage. However, many people may not have any attribute at all, and choosing a life skill is also a matter of personal preference. And naturally, the higher the skill class, the better it is. His weapon is a sword, so Archie recommended choosing the military life skill. This life skill has nine levels. Most people cannot go beyond the fourth and fifth levels, and very few people reach the sixth level. The sixth level is a key stage. If he can reach it, his strength and speed will be at the level of the highest life skill. Tyler was inspired to choose a military life skill. The blonde asked if the young man had received the parcel, but the guy didn't even know that he was supposed to receive something. Last time, everyone who helped resist the horde of monsters was sent rewards. He was just given a military life skill, and the delivery should have arrived a long time ago. After some time, the little sister returned from school and happily rushed to her brother. As always, she was very worried about her brother's health. And Tina was also afraid that he had died, since he had been gone for a long time. She said that he was the only one left of her family, and if something happened to him, she wouldn't even know how to survive it. Her older brother calmed her down, telling her not to worry, because as long as he was around, nothing would happen. Since the girl's vacation starts tomorrow, her brother has already booked plane tickets and they will go traveling together. Tina quickly rushed to pack her suitcase, and Tyler asked if any package had arrived. It turns out that two parcels arrived, and his sister said that she would now bring them to his room. The brunette was surprised that he received two parcels at once. When he opened the first one without the sender's address, he saw a note. The password for opening the ring was written on the paper, and the ring itself was in the box. This ring has a capacity of 100,000 square meters. If the guy increased the capacity of his own ring, he would have to spend 100 million credits. When they looked through his inventory, they couldn't find anything suitable, but something still caught their eye. Among the things, the boys found Adam's battle sword, which made them very happy. There is also a storage room for credit. I wonder how much Garcia managed to accumulate. A notification appeared. The owner's account updated funds amount to 38 billion, 155 million, which shocked the guys. The guys didn't expect that Goldie would give away all the contents of the ring without blinking an eye. The influence of these aristocrats was much more terrible than he could have imagined. At this point, the owner had enough credits and four promotion cards in reserve. He could upgrade Bai and Ugolko, but a double upgrade is equivalent to a single life transformation, and both of them will turn into another species and will require a large amount of life energy during evolution. An unusual surge of life force may attract the attention of a superior or even a surveillance bureau, so Lucky advised against starting an improvement in the territory of strongholds or the lands adjacent to them. It is also dangerous to do it in the wild, as there may be superior monsters. From the package, Tyler took out a bronze token, which meant that he had been promoted to the rank of bronze, meaning that he was now a real hunter and not a reserve one. Next, he took out the life skill military training crystal that Archie had spoken of, which he could activate with life energy. Tyler and the assistant were surprised when a hologram suddenly appeared. After a while, an old gray-haired man loaded up. He started showing various fighting poses, and the guys didn't immediately understand what was happening. Tyler said it was hand-to-hand -hand combat, but it felt like every blow was fatal. After the man finished showing the techniques, he said that the name of this close combat technique is military tactics. It is used together with the military life skill until the owner reaches the gold rank. Learning military tactics is not difficult at all. The main thing is to reach a higher level. You need to divide the flow of life into two, two into three, three into four. Eventually, his life force will be divided into 12 streams, and then he will be able to fully master military tactics. He needs to divide the energy either from all sides or gather it together and hit with all his might. The formation of different forms can develop military tactics to maximum effectiveness. It was no wonder that everyone liked the military life skill. Thanks to it, you can arbitrarily change the shape of your life force. Dividing the power into 12 streams is not easy. But if he succeeds, he will be able to give his power any form. After training, the owner reached the first level of military tactics, and now he can turn it into a card. If he trains, he will be able to receive it fragment by fragment, and if he collects a significant number of fragments, he will reach the next level. The skill will be upgraded to level 2 when he collects 200 fragments. To move to level 3, he will need 400, and so the number will always double. And to go from 8 to 9, he will need 810,000 fragments of life skill. With each opening, the effects increase by 12%. Accordingly, at the 5th level, it will be 60%. When the skill reaches the sixth, the increase will already be 72%.
and this is already the level of the highest life skill. Tyler realized that if he collected fragments, he could reach higher levels much faster than others. He was able to reach the first level in one evening, but there are those who needed only half an hour. Suddenly, Tina entered the room and greeted her brother in a cook's costume. Since the holidays had begun and her brother had promised that they would go on a trip, she decided to thank him. On the table, there were many different interesting dishes, clearly saturated with poison. The brother understood that he couldn't upset his sister and tried to stuff everything that was on the table into himself as quickly as possible, choking, but saying that everything was very tasty. Because he praised her dish so much, she said that she would now give him more, because she had prepared a lot. After eating, his sister told him to pack his suitcase. If they wanted to catch the next flight to Xiaogong, they could use the eagle, so they could get to the plane on time. Poisoned and barely alive, Tyler croaked that they didn't have to fly on the eagle. When they left the house, he decided to show his sister something that would get them there much faster than the oral. Now that his sister knew he was a tamer, the boy shared that he had found out about it himself when he registered for the reserve hunter exam. They rushed to their destination, and the sister admired her brother. Luckily, the girl had grabbed a cake that she had baked herself. They would definitely have to celebrate such an event, but Tyler insistently asked her to dissuade her from this idea. Tina was delighted when they arrived in Xiagong. Now she understood why everyone came here during the holidays. It turns out she made a small list while they were inside the ship. It included the most famous eateries in Shigun. All day long, they walked around different places and had fun in every possible way. Tyler was suddenly drawn to the news that the Stewart family was the most powerful among the six royal families of the 7th Division. The daughter of the Stewart family reached the rank of excellence at the age of 19. She is a genius that is born once in 100 years. The news started talking about the increasing number of missing young girls, but without listening to the end, the sister took her brother's arm and they went on to have fun. A little later, they checked into the hotel. Tyler had to carry his sister in his arms, as she had eaten her fill and fell asleep halfway there. After a while, the young man called Lucky, who was unpleasantly surprised because he did not expect that he would be disturbed during the holidays. Tyler said that he delivered his sister to her room and she was already asleep, and in the remaining time they would continue to improve the life skill. Even now he could easily separate the streams of life. Unfortunately, only patience and hard work can help him learn military tactics, and when he moves to the next level, he will have to train even more. Lucky said that the young man would be able to get one fragment if he completed one full rotation cycle. Even if he trained 15 hours a day, he would still need at least seven days to reach the second level. However, the guy found that as the number of workouts increased, the time it took to complete the cycle could decrease. At this time, Tina was walking in the corridor. She couldn't sleep. She decided to go to her brother and find out what he was doing. Meanwhile, Tyler's life energy rotation was going well. If he was lucky, he would be able to reach the second level this evening. Since no one answered the girl, she thought that her brother had fallen asleep and decided to take a walk alone. She was walking in the park. I don't understand why my brother goes to bed so early because they could play together better. Suddenly the girl felt like someone was following her and she became worried. She decided that it would be better to return to the hotel and go for a walk with her brother tomorrow. After she crumpled the bag and threw it in the trash, it suddenly came to life and showed its teeth and then completely swallowed her. After a while, the detective was already at the hotel and was sorting out what was happening. The hotel owner tried to convince that his hotel had always been very popular among guests because they carefully monitored the safety of their stay. Their cameras could have captured the missing girl leaving her room, but the perpetrator must have been well aware of the location of cameras throughout the hotel. After she left her room, no other camera was able to record her, likely indicating that the crime was committed in the blind spots of the surveillance cameras. The first to report the girl's disappearance was her brother, who had checked into the hotel with her, and when he discovered that she was not in her room, he immediately reported it to them. The detective wanted to know where his brother was now, but the owner said that he had disappeared somewhere. At this time, in one of the buildings, Shaguntina was thrown to the floor. Opposite her sat a little girl, and behind her was a huge caterpillar. A girl named Lee introduced her friend, a caterpillar, who helps find new family members. Today, she will be a new sister, and they will all be daddy's girls. Out of fear and not understanding what was happening, Tina began to tremble and turn blue. The girl said that if she tried to escape from here, she would become food for her caterpillar, just like everyone who had been here before her. She sat on Tina and began to choke her, saying that she liked her, but she had to be an obedient sister. Meanwhile, in the same building, there was a guard standing by the elevator. Thanks to the blood hunt skill, Tyler knew that his sister was here and was serious. The guards became hostile and prepared to shoot, and one of them also warned to send all the guards. 
At this moment, Bai with fiery wings appeared behind them. He quickly dealt with all his opponents in a few blows. After he cleared the way for him, an enraged Tyler moved on. There were already many guards waiting for him outside the elevator door, ready to shoot mercilessly as soon as the doors opened. And as soon as the elevator arrived at the 50th floor and the doors began to open, shots were heard. However, the young man decided to enter the room from a different entrance, thereby ending up behind them. After some time, they were all defeated because the elder brother would punish anyone who dared to touch his sister.